those high spots. Those are not necessarily, but let's stop. Do the high spots with some psychology. When High Spots came to me and offered me the opportunity to start interviewing people for a, uh, you know. I wrestled Brody in Japan for an hour, a couple times I wrestled Brody. I want to have fun, I still have respect for TNA. The network is here, I'm checking it out, I'm watching all the goodies, it's up, it's running, it's beautiful. Here come the Hardy Brothers! It was me looking myself in the mirror going, you know what? You never know when another shot like this is going to come along. There'll be another woman along in a minute. And it's come to this. And here it is tonight. Hello. Welcome to uh, Development to Least Speaking, I think I'm going to go with. <laughs> you guys like that? Yeah. I think it's good enough. Um... I feel like uh, our generation of wrestlers, you know, developmental is a big thing, and uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to go through like the territories and things like that. And I think we get the bad rap of like, ah, oh, you know, these guys didn't do it that way. Which I think we all love wrestling enough that we sure shit would have done that, you know. Yeah. But this is what yeah. is in front of us to make it in the business, you know. Um, so I've collected all of us and four guys with four very different experiences, mm -hmm. and uh, this could be a. Uh, crash course into what to expect if you were were to get signed or just an out you know if you're not a worker just a uh, look into what it's like fantasy if you're in a fantasy camp sure, of yeah. of <laughs> sure. Um, but before we get to everyone getting contracts and stuff how about um, I want to talk about everyone's experiences as an extra being a WWE extra okay. right. um, how many times this and that I only got to do it once um, Tommy Dreamer called me. I was playing softball in college on a Sunday night, and he called me and said, "Hey, I need you and your partner in the garden tomorrow for a <laughs> raw, raw SmackDown Super Show." And I was did he like, know who your partner was? He, we did a six-man tag with Tommy, okay. so he was familiar with Zach and I. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I can't even breathe. <laughs> was Zach bummed that he wasn't like, "Hey, Zach, we need you and your partner." <laughs> um, <laughs> he was just the partner. Actually, he's the partner. Um, I kind of fucked it up. He called Mikey Whipwreck and said, hey, I need those two young guys. Oh, okay. So he didn't even, yeah, he couldn't hey, even decipher us at But the you time. know what? You cleaned it up. Because yeah. he would have seen that and been like, fucking. Yeah. So I, I can't even like breathe. Well, I mean, I, Tommaso's extra is the ultimate no. extra. Yeah. So I, 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 had I was weird. the king of the extras. probably finish with him. Okay, well, that's really last well, well, I mean, I, like, I mean, I was an extra maybe 50, 55 that times, many? I would think. Like, I, I have... I have 10 or 15 velocity slash, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, slash heat matches. Hey, best of DVD. Yeah, I have a best of, of, of velocity matches. <laughs> um, but, so, like, I, my claim to fame as an extra, I think a lot of people I still get shit for today is... Um, the Ferry? The Ferry, the ECW <laughs> yeah, Ferry, yeah, yeah. Why yeah. Be like, that's cool, come on. Yeah, like, um, and there's still a picture roaming around of uh, me as a fairy, uh, Kurt uh, Dysfunction. Um, oh, Kurt uh, Kruger. Uh, Kurt, Kurt, Kurt Kruger, and... As a as Beetlejuice and um, <laughs> and Stevie Richards like looking at us like in the picture. What, what, was, the, what was it all for? It was a Halloween Halloween night or okay. something like that. I do remember, but I don't remember why. Yeah, but I mean, so like I don't know, like that was my I guess, I, and I can I can go into as much as you want or as little as you want. What was your weirdest extra match? Like the most peculiar. Looking back on it now, like oh. um, I thought it was. I had a match with Big Vito when he was in a dress. <laughs> yeah, and big. It went from Tell like man everywhere dress. Yeah, it went from I'm gonna give you. It's gonna Saturn. be Saturn. Saturn's way down. I'm sorry, <laughs> that's true. It's gonna be sixty percent me, forty percent you. And I was like, wow, that's a lot. And then it went 70, 30, <laughs> 80, 20. And him coming back to me like. And it literally went, it's like, yeah, it's going to be like 95 me, 90, or 5% you. <laughs> and then I literally got nothing in. And he just squashed me, which it should have been. Mm -hmm. But that was a weird one. Vito in a dress. Were you always called Colt Cabana? No, I, that's a good question. The it ribs. should have been your question. The ribs, I know, I know. Um, so I Colt Cabana a couple times. And then what was, uh, I was, yeah, I was uh, Chris Guy, yeah. which was uh, <laughs> Ace Steel's real name. Ace Steel's name. You can't be texting while we're doing you guys are playing yeah, it's about his, it's about his airport, airport thing in a couple hours okay. so. good though now I'm settled call no, him man, out there was, there was this tweet that yeah um, my, my funny quick little thing when we get there so it's a super show at the garden it's raw, a live raw and that tape's fine so the whole 2005 roster's there like I met Hogan like Eddie Guerrero it's the only time I ever met Eddie Guerrero it was like mind blowing 
But uh, Zach and I were so dumb, we didn't know there was another changing room for extras. So we we got that. That's like, not dumb though. Well, we just had no idea. Yeah. We're like yeah. a year in the business, and like we just roll our bags in, like sit down there in the fucking garden, and then like Bob Holly sitting next to me, just like, <laughs> staring at us, like fuming. And then luckily it was um it was actually the day Eminem won the title to Eddie and Ray, and Morrison was like, "Hey man, there's like another spot for guys like us," because they weren't even in the locker room yet. Like yeah, they, he took, yeah. like saved our ass. Yeah, so yeah. that could have been pretty ugly. <laughs> uh, I did um, there was I did extra work. In I think it was 2004. Once uh, it was myself. Uh, it was when Zach Allen was on the roster. So mm-hmm. it was myself, Alex Shelley, Nate Webb, and Truth Martini. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that was a pretty funny thing. Uh, we got in the ring before the show, and we were supposed to like, oh maybe Fit will come in. Well, he hit traffic, so he didn't show up. So they sent us to the ring to just. Like chain wrestle with each other. Nobody was watching us. Right. And they're like, yeah, go do stuff. So we like chain wrestled for like an hour and a half. <laughs> Jimmy Jacobs was there too. Sorry. <laughs> Jimmy was there as well. So we're all there. It, it was just a really bizarre thing. And that was the night that Brock threw Zach into the post and he bled crazy. Oh, right. Okay. It's just a funny story about that is that um, Truth Martini trained Zach. Mm-hmm. Right. And Truth had a dark match against Mortis. Canyon was doing the Mortis thing. He had a purple Mortis outfit. I just read about that in his book. Yeah. yeah. So Arn Anderson goes over to Zach and he's like, is your first time getting color? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, oh, I'll make you, you know, this, when you make a blade, you do this. And then Zach's like, uh-huh, uh-huh. But he's watching the monitor because Truth is having the match with Mortis. He's like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Cool. He's like, you got it? Yeah, I got it. Wasn't listening to Arn at all. Right, so he makes a blade that's like you know, like a like a little knife, mm-hmm. like a like a shiv, and then that's why <laughs> he, so I mean much. he's got like that that X scar on his head kind of, oh, and then shit. that's why he bled wow. so much and it looked really awesome. But yeah. wow. that's that story. Um, and then the only other time I did extra work was uh, when Claudio and I had a tryout. I was in Long yeah, Island. Yeah, nice you guys were there. I had, I had become such a pro at extra work that. Uh, like it was just about like collecting money. Like I was full time wrestler, so like a Monday and Tuesday, of two hundred like of two hundred fifty dollars. Yeah. For me, it was a booking. Yeah, it That's was. Um, and so, uh, it was the Punjabi cell match, and I remember specifically because it was a pay per view match. I wasn't gonna get around or get looked at. It was just I was just there. There's only two extras, and we were in this. We were in this. I like we were in this little extra room. It wasn't even the extra changing room because there was only two of us. Mm-hmm. It was basically just a small room with a couch like this and a TV. And I was like, fuck it, man. And so, like, I would sit on the couch and watch TV for an hour and a half. And then every 10, like, after every hour and a half on the 10 minute spot, I'd go take a lap, walk around, be go, go be seen, go back to my spot, <laughs> sit on the couch, watch a movie. I was I watched two movies that day and then eventually watched. Uh, uh, like Undertaker in a Punjabi cell. What was Awful. it? It was like Big Show. Oh, you and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that reminded me of a real funny story. I walked out of catering one time with Luke Gallows, and uh, we see Tony Jones from Beyond the Mat. Yeah. He's like, you know, of course, Gallows like, I gotta shake that hand. And like, <laughs> so he's in the suit, and uh, like we said, you know, say hi to him, whatever. And I noticed him. He's so Beyond the Mat was what ninety eight, ninety seven. Yeah. We filmed that. And this is like two thousand eight. This guy's been doing this so long. Yeah. He didn't even. We watched him all day. He didn't even change. He stayed in his suit all day on his phone. Never even put his gear on. Nothing because he's just yeah. like I'm collecting this fucking dude. Yeah. yeah, this that yeah. it is what it is. Like it's fucking Tony Jones would be on the mat. They're not gonna sign this motherfucker. <laughs> so I thought that was pretty awesome. Yeah. Tommaso was the old, he got yeah. the he got the my debut was the best. But I I've, I probably did it like five extras and three of them were like notable because I did I worked with Jamie Noble once and it was for him like this is my big. It was his big return after he did his Ring of Honor stint. And mm-hmm. he like he was like, I just remember him pulling me aside and being like, pressure's on, they want me to be just super aggressive, I have to prove myself. Oh, like, He's gonna the shit out of I'm you. I'm going to beat the shit out of you today. And uh, it's actually on YouTube, and it's, it's Jamie Noble versus DeMarso Whitney. It's D-E-M-A-R-S-O. Couldn't be bothered. <laughs> DeMarso. Yeah. That's Sergeant Slaughter going, what's your name? And you're like, DeMarso, DeMarso. <laughs> it's like probably 100% yeah. yeah, like Like the Starbucks yeah. things where they... Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but, and he hits, he hits the, the gut buster, you know, that Roderick Strong invented. And... Uh, <laughs> 
And uh, but it, it was weird. Like he remembered me for a while after that, and then eventually, of course, forgot me. <laughs> but that was one. And then one time I had uh, I had worked. It was Kofi Kingston and myself. This is right when he got signed, but no one knew he got signed yet. Because we you guys are from, you broke in the same. We came area. in together. Yeah, we yeah. trained together, and we, we took on a Caden Murdoch. And oh. it was so great, guys. <laughs> I had a I had a velocity match versus Murdoch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I had so I had a singles verse. Verse, I think Murdoch, and it went well, and then that's why he picked me for this tag, and picked Kofi as well, and uh, but they did the high low finisher, mm-hmm. and it was brutal. Like basically, my legs got taken out first, so the clothesline from Cade was just, I mean, just squished me. Like I took a horrible bump on my neck, and I just, I remember like kind of tingling for a second. But the crazy part was me and Kofi get to the back, and Shawn Michaels comes literally running our way. And comes right over to me. He's like, "Hey, are you okay?" I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm fine, I'm fine." He's like, "No, you, you have to be honest with me." He's like, "I saw that bump. We're going into a program with these guys." He's like, "Are they safe?" Wow. And I Jeez. no clue. Like, am I being tested? What's it? yeah? And I was like, "No, no, no, totally fine, totally fine." You'll and be great. <laughs> Kofi and I go in the other room, which was the extra room, and I look at Kofi and I'm like. Hey, I think he broke my neck. Should I tell Sean? <laughs> Should I tell That's Sean the truth? A lot of responsibility for an extra they need to spend. <laughs> and now Kofi's saying to me, he's like, I, like we're debating this. So I'm like, all right, I think I'm gonna go out there and maybe talk to him. And this is completely not fabricated. So I walk out of the extra room. Sean, can I have a word with you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Before I get to Sean, uh, Foley stops me, and he's like, Hey, he's like, Are you okay? I'm like, yeah, like I haven't seen this, of course. I'm like, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm fine, I'm fine. And he goes, that's the worst bump I've ever seen in my From Mick Foley. From Mick oh, Foley. Foley. Oh. Literally, I'm not kidding. You. Kofi's like motion drops and we look at each other. And finally, I just look at Kofi. I'm like, oh, I feel like I just can't tell them. Like, I can't. I don't know what to say. I'm just going to I'm just gonna pretend I'm fine. I'm just fine. So, yeah, Mick Foley and Shawn Michaels checked on me. And, and so, you, so you didn't, you just said I never reported. You, yeah. you, like, you know what? You know what? Um, I'm going to let Michaels take that high low. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then he's going to find you. Where's that kid? That's he told why me Michaels he was great. Stopped wrestling. Yeah. No, uh, yeah. So, uh, well, a couple of years later, I did end up having a little, uh, you know, lingering neck issues and found out that I did have like a little d- disc problem. I have no idea if that's what it's from, but. That was that was a very let's assume yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah good old Cade and then obviously the first one I think maybe I told it with you at some point I don't know I feel like it's it's under wrestling yeah I feel mm-hmm. like it's a more known one like my first time ever going to WB uh, I was trained at Chaotic Training Center which is very ad, uh, adamant at the time of getting guys tryouts and darks so they called up Chaotic and said we need uh, the description was something like we need uh, excuse me the, uh, we need uh, under six you excused foot. yourself for Chris. <laughs> I always do. I don't know. That <laughs> weird habit. Uh, it's <laughs> we need guys under six foot with dark hair, which is like never the. the yeah, never what they're looking for. Yeah. We're looking to see. And uh, so they brought three of us down, and oh, and you had to have a suit on. And I, so I borrow my brother's suit. Three of us go down there, and uh, just by luck, Johnny or I just picks me for the role. And I, at that point, I don't think I knew what it was for. Because I looked the oldest, and I was by far, I was the youngest one of the three of us. I was like 19 or 20. And I ended up, that was when I ended up being on SmackDown with uh, Undertaker, uh, posing as Hassan's lawyer. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> they gave me, they, they got me a new suit that they, they tailored for me, which still didn't fit properly. <laughs> but they sent out somebody, gave me a new suit, gave me a good payday. I did the whole segment, but that whole day was insane because I had to read in front of Vince McMahon. Oh I had to do a trial run with Undertaker, <clears throat> Vince, Stephanie, uh, Hunter, Sh- everybody. Anybody who's anybody was there. And it was like, the, you know, it was the and, most and bizarre up, experience. Up until ever. that point, how much work had you done on promos and talking and stuff? Uh, I had just invented the character Tommy Penmanship. <laughs> like, literally just, like, wow. probably like a few weeks before, did a Dr. Tom camp. And I was given that name in a in a joke battle royale, and <laughs> so, so so my promo work consisted. Of, is uh, you have yeah. excellent penmanship? Ah, uh, you beautiful. Penmanship. It came out with a big feather pen. You don't yeah. remember that? Yeah, I loved it. I remember it. Yeah. Damn it! I never saw this. Yeah. Well, he, was, he was my biggest I think I've heard supporter. This name. guy right here. Wow. Yeah, I did a, a Ring of Honor dark match, and you pointed me out in the locker room and made a how big is your, How is it? your legitimate penmanship? You know, like any. 
29 year old male so it was all bullshit <laughs> of course okay it's that, would, that, that, that would never happen nowadays because they would have an actor do that they, yeah they yeah for some indie guy yeah. it's pretty yeah. good it's yeah. a lot of responsibility i mean you had to read yeah. the script it was it was a, i i i was in uh vince's office with just him and hunter as hunter made him uh, a muscle milkshake and I had to read the script with Ed Kosky was the writer yeah. and Stephanie. It, it was wow. the most bizarre day of my life. Wow. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's let's get into getting a contract, which I think nowadays is not even like a big deal because I think getting through developmental and like I think that's more of a struggle than like the struggle of getting a contract. They'll just, they want to fill that performance center up with so many bodies. It's kind of like you know they can take a chance is, on is, anybody. Are you, are you taking a shot? You taking a shot? No, no, I'm just. No, I'm that's. I'm just bullshit. It's, 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 I, I feel. I, to well, quote my friend Paul Burchill one time, we were sitting in the stands yeah. just watching people, and he's like, "This place is a political minefield." Yeah. <laughs> and that's so true. I feel I was there when it became known that it was like they were filling. I think it, when when they bought when they bought that, I was there when they. Uh, and who was with FCW? Was warehouse. I the only one here when? When it closed. The FCW warehouse. No, when it, he was when, on the road when yeah, when it became a thing. So when FCW became a thing, and they had they made that building, yeah. and Steve Kern put up all that money and whatever whatever it is, and they had three rings. It's the first time ever a three ring yeah. place with one ring. That was when I was like, we need to fill bodies. So I was there when the hey, it's not really a contract thing. It's a let's fill bodies thing. Well, with it's, that, a, it's a number. Uh, yeah. we'd like to have let's get a hundred people. To, yeah, or yeah, they wanted a hundred. people. Before that, it was, you know, because, uh, well, mm, I'm trying to think. There was a point in OVW where there was 40 people, there was, or, or 30 people, and, there was, and then there was a point where there was about, as it was fire, as everyone, as it was closing down, yeah. there was about 17 signed people, yeah. maybe 16 well, yeah, That's what I was going to say. While they wanted yeah. to fill bodies, they also dumped a ton of people during that process. Right, and that's what I'm saying. There was a point where there was yeah. the little, yeah. but then I, when I got to FCW, then it was like, hey, then we then need to happened. fill this yeah. place up with bodies. Yeah. Right. right. Um, do you want to, I don't know, it's pretty, pretty well known here, so I drunk Johnny Ace. Yeah, I just and recently little... started talking about it. Like, I, I, I never, oh, really? I kind of kept it quiet for a little bit, like, but I, I've said it on a couple podcasts that, yeah, um, uh, I, you know, I, there was one time where I wrestled Jim, uh, Eugene, I, and it's on YouTube. Maybe it's not on YouTube, but it was one of the, like, I think it was one of the, only because it was me, it was like one of the best enhancement matches ever, right? <laughs> yeah. It was entertaining, people liked it. So many people came after me. Jimmy Yang was like, I can't believe you did not get a job from that. <laughs> he goes, I can't believe it. And I remember before that, I was like doing the bands, and like Johnny walked by me, and he stopped, and he goes, hey. Uh, how long have you been wrestling? And like he's looking me up and down like a piece of meat, and I'm like, yeah. and I just remember going like, I love wrestling, I love wrestling so much. It's all I want to do. It was like the like I didn't know what to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know what to say. So, anyways, um, I didn't get a job that time. There's you know there's so many whatever like and, and I, my story's a little different from Tommaso's maybe where like you know and maybe a little similar to Chris's where I we'd build up these names, build up these names, build up these names. And what had happened with me, and I've said this before, is just like. What happened was so many people, especially, you know, Punk, Ken Anderson, Regal, Matt Hardy. Davari was, Davari was probably the biggest one. They were all like, Johnny, sign this guy, sign this guy. And he was like, no, no, no. And eventually I had a, a special, I never talked about this, I had a special uh, Detroit uh, WrestleMania uh, a special. They have the room. What's it called? When it's just the ring in the room, like um, they're like rehearsal rooms. Right? Rehearsal room yeah. where the rings there, and it was just going to be me versus Sean doing a match. It was a special time to just Good to just show him. Fit was just going to sit there and watch us wrestle in that rehearsal room, yeah. and Fit went out. I think was getting drunk with Malenko, wow. and like they never were there. We I sat in that ring for like an hour, two hours, <laughs> three hours, waiting for them wow. to come. And we just kind of like, well, I guess this is not going to happen. And, and Davari kept on texting Johnny, like, hey, man, like this guy's here. He wants to get a job, blah, blah, blah. Never happened, never happened. Eventually, Johnny's at the bar drunk, and finally he's like, fuck it. And I think Ken went up to him and was like, Colt, you know, and Davari's there. And, and he's just, come on, you want to you wanna do this? And I was like, please. He's like, all right, well, uh, you know, you're going to have to spend a lot of, you know, like, You'll probably be there for like three months, and um, I don't know why that was always the line. Yeah, three I mean, months. Never ends. You'll be there three. No one did that. So like, it wasn't like you're hired. It was like you know, it's kind of like, well, uh, you'll be. There. And I'm like, am I hired? Is this a job? And he's like, so, uh, you know, so I, I, I'll start you a little more because you know you got a little name, so seven fifty a week. And I was like, so I'm in. He's like, do you want to? I was like, 
fuck yeah. He's, he's like, all right, well, I'll call uh, Nova and we'll set it up. I'm like, you sure? We good? He's like, yeah, I'll call, give you a call. And I was like, sweet. And that was it. I would be completely panicked that he's drunk and just not. And I was. Okay. And, and I called. <laughs> he's going to forget. Yeah. Tomorrow. And I called Nova and I was like, Nova, he said this. To, or I went to Nova. You know, I was like, I think he said it. He said it. Remember, he said it. And like, and I, I was, I was on both of them. Like, you, you've got it. Yeah. And that's a great point. And I was like, to, yes, this is a real away. thing. Yeah. This is a real thing. Yeah. I love Nova. He was a really good to Zach and I. Yeah. And I thought he was great at that job. Like, he would come down to the Deep South and have a stack of, like, indie DVDs. Like, hey, I watch these in the Skyrise, guys. You can have them. Give them me and Zach. Like, oh, really? That's, I just thought that was cool that he was making that effort. Oh, yeah. wow. And when he signed me, I remember he was like, my next goal is uh, Seidel and then Claudio. That's what he yeah, told me. He was a big ruckus, Mark. <laughs> right, really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I think so, too. Yeah, yeah, Johnny yeah. Ace and Ruckus. Is that what you're talking about? No, Nova. Oh, yeah. Nova. <laughs> Imagine Johnny Ace watching Ruckus matches. Yeah. Well, those Ruckus games real good. Oh, and then, yeah. Razzle dazzle. And then, um, yeah, Nova said, you, uh, he, go, he goes, where do you want to go? Because he was a friend. I knew him from the Indies. He goes, where do you want to go? And, and he goes, I said, OVW, because it was five hours from my house, a driving distance. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I thought you'd want to go to Deep South um, because Ace Steel, my trainer, was there. Yeah. And I was like, fuck no, I don't want to go to Deep South. So I heard the horror stories of <laughs> DeMott. Right. And, uh, and, and, um, and I wanted to be able to drive. Like, I want to be able to drive back to Chicago. Okay. Yeah, and so and a lot, I think a funny story that like you get a two thousand dollar driving a two thousand dollar moving check, yeah. and I'm still living the life of a hustle of an indie wrestler. Mm -hmm. I'm only making I'm only gonna make seven fifty a week. I, I was making more than that as an independent wrestler, which is pretty crazy at that point in my life. So um, it was a two thousand dollar moving check. It cost me fifty bucks to move. I pocketed nineteen fifty. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. And yeah, you know, it was fifty dollars in gas. I threw everything in my car. I didn't buy anything new. Yeah. I moved into you know this room and I waited for everyone to get fired to collect their to collect their furniture. Mm -hmm. Oh, I got his couch, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> Which is probably the couch that I found outside my apartment when I moved in. Perfect. It was a great couch. Was no, it like a lazy boy chair. Wait, <coughs> maybe I, got, I, got I think I got boy. I got Wade you Barrett's dropped. couch. <laughs> Zach and I dropped some stuff off when we left. To I don't remember having yeah. this. Yeah, we gave you a bunch of I had a lazy boy chair. I took something from you. It probably a lazy boy chair. Yeah, like a recline. Because the, the day I showed up at my apartment, it was outside my apartment door, and literally, yeah. I like looked both ways. I was like, "Fuck it!" Yeah. <laughs> Pulled it inside, sprayed it down, put a sheet over it. I was like, "It's mine." Yeah. <laughs> I had something from sw I had Swagger's. I had Swagger's couch. Frankenstein apartment. That I turned into a bed yeah. until Mondo moved to f to FCW, and then I took his bed. And then we got Wade Barrett's couch, and then I think you're Lazy Boy. Yeah. yeah. That's actually like comfortable. one of my favorite parts of development is like the camaraderie, because you guys are all kind of like in the trenches and stuff, and like some of my best friends in the business, like, like the, that's how we became friends, mm -hmm. we were like in OVW together where we weren't enjoying ourselves so much, but we had to enjoy each other's company. Yep. Um, and that, I found that everywhere I was, you know, Deep South, which was so fucking grueling and like you know and they buddies all those guys but you, just because you're in the trenches together and I think trenches is a good way to put it it's like the army almost yeah, not that sure. I, none of us have ever been in the army yeah, that, that <laughs> like camaraderie of just like fuck, going out to eat or like going to the movies or something it's just like so important it's something yeah. I always cherish it you know mm -hmm. yeah. I definitely think it's a, a, a positive <clears throat> aspect of developmental for sure um signing <clears throat> yeah my getting signed story isn't really anything fancy um me and Claudio were uh, had a had a good run, like a year run as tag champs at ROH, mm -hmm. and our contracts ran out. And I mean, we talked to Sinclair, um, you know, we talked to people at WWE. We were you know putting out some feelers, and then it took a little while, but we ended up getting a look. <clears throat> we got a look on on a Monday and a Tuesday in Long Island, Providence, and then uh, we kind of talked back and forth all week. And then that Friday, they you know, they called. The I remember games. like um, you guys kind of like. They were like some. I think Punk was like, "Hey, like make sure you go out in your gear and you like, because yeah. those that look was like the big like official look." Yeah. And you guys went and did like a, a tag around with your gear. Yeah, yeah. Like, we uh, so we had like a tryout match. We had tryout matches. So you know we were full gear. I think I think we had like tank tops on too. But you know because yeah, it was like workout gear. It. And then it was uh, I think the first one was maybe us against the Usos. Which is cool. Never met him or anything, and like, all right, just go have a match, mm -hmm. you know. Which is cool. But then it's like, you know, Arn and Fit and all these guys. So so this is in front of no crowd. This is just. A yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, sorry. The most crap, like nerve wracking, crap, shitty the worst. situation yeah. you could be put yeah. in in all the wrestling. Worst. Yeah, and like yeah. You no know, fans, ten, just judging you. Ten, like, yeah, ten cool. producers, and then also all the other extra people. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. It's it's just kind of a weird situation. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Yeah, you, your your boys were there for that. Uh, was Alex was there. Alex Reynolds and Tony Nice. Alex probably. Tony Nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think Papa Don was there. I, I remember Hunter talking to you guys, mm. and that shit doesn't happen. So I'm like, oh, that's that's like a good sign. Yeah, it was pretty cool. So so we uh, wrestled the Usos, and it was cool. Uh, and then like, uh, oh, I want to do another one. You know, what do you want, Arn? He's like, oh, I want them as heels again. You know, whatever. So we got Lucky Cannon and Connor O'Brien, <laughs> right? Uh, so Lucky then that Cannon. was kind of a wow. funny one. Uh, but then, yeah, Hunter like pulled us aside, and he was like, "Well, if we decide to do something, you know, it it won't be like we're not if we hire you, we're not hiring you as a tag team. Like that's not that's not really how Vince does things. Like yeah. you'd be individual talents and da 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 whatever. And he <laughs> needs he wasn't like ruling out the possibility of maybe someday something, but that was like." the part of that meeting there mm-hmm. and then we uh, sat down with, with Johnny Ace and we were in his office for about an hour kind of talking about stuff See, that, that's all good <clears> signs though that doesn't happen you know right. yeah yeah so yeah that was it was it was, it was, good was he drunk he was not <laughs> okay he was not uh, well, and, and a cool was a raspy? cool thing <clears throat> very raspy uh, the cool thing about that though is Claudio and I had worked for Noah and Noah was basically all of All Japan minus a couple people, yeah. and he spent so many years in that's All cool. Japan. When the Noah people left All Japan, uh, Johnny A stopped, and then that's when he went to WCW. Mm-hmm. So he had so many old guys. Like, how's this guy doing? How's this guy? Uh, you know, oh, you know, we had Morishima and, and Go Shizaki for a tryout a couple years ago. So it was I kind of, that. I mean, never met Johnny before, but it just helped the conversation a bit. Um, yeah, so. <laughs> It was funny, when I got signed, I did these, like, these awkward, I don't know if you guys remember this, there was, like, this weird dot-com tryout that we just submitted to, and they do it before live events all across the country and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, I just remember, that was, like, how Spear, Sean Spears, yeah, Sean Ty Spears Dillinger, one, like, yeah. Buffalo or yeah. something, so we, there was one in Nassau Coliseum, so we submitted for it. I think Mikey contacted Dreamer and kind of had, gave us the answer, mm-hmm. we got picked for it, and they like, mm-hmm. went on, like, dot-com, like, in Sandy, or they were, we were going to this tryout, Yeah. and then uh, when we got there... There was probably like 13 or 15 people. Only five were people who were trained wrestlers. The rest were just people that yeah. looked the part. Yeah. Who, knew so, the, who knew the password? So it was like kind of bullshit head. because like they put us through like these drills. They're pretty simple and stuff. Like Dean Malenko ran it, you know, squats and push ups and shit like that. But then only some of us could have matches, and the other ones just got to like stand there and do nothing. Mm-hmm. Like this is bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it was um, Mason Rage. Did you read him? Yeah. Yeah. He was there. Uh, I had to wrestle the ECW zombie, Tim Arson, who just oh. passed away. Rest in peace. In a real stinker ski. And uh, Zach got to wrestle Mason Rage, and then Bobby Fish was the only other oh, worker. Yeah. And, like, he cut a great promo. He looked great. He by far blew everyone out of the water and the whole thing to the point where... Was he Jerk Jackson still, or was he Bobby Fish? I believe he was Jerk Jackson. This is like, oh, 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 five, oh, six. There you go. So, uh... At the end, to the point where at the end, Dreamer's like, all right, guys, it's over. Um, I'll be honest. If anything comes to this, it's going to be in Bobby's favor. Like, <laughs> nobody was impressive whatsoever. And he's like, here's tickets to the show. And, like, tickets to live, and that was it. Mm-hmm. So Dreamer called us, like, five days later, and I almost, like, passed out talking to him on the phone. Like, I, like, I just couldn't believe it, because I, I, I think, I don't know if, Bobby looked a lot like Gunnar Scott. I always thought maybe... That had something to do with it. I just made that up in my head. I don't know. I wrestled him on the last ever episode of Velocity. Legend. Last <laughs> ever episode of Velocity. Oh. Who'd you wrestle? Gunner with? Scott. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit. Oh, right. right. Um. So he hired us, and I'm thinking like, I, I think they just wanted to scalpel something from the tryout. And Zach and I looked alike and wore matching gear. And that's the only reason I could think they threw us a bone. And then he, uh, we were in college, and that was February, and he wouldn't let us drop out. So I got WWE. Developmental checks it was the most money I ever made in my life. I thought it was a million wow. for like four or five, uh, three or four months in college and didn't go to class. So it was one of the best times of my life. <laughs> um, and then we showed up to Deep South and we were talking about Johnny Ace. Uh, the day we get there is one of those days that Johnny comes, which was super scary in developmental because he's usually yelling at you for something. So, and there was always all kinds of problems in Deep, Deep South with people complaining and all that shit. So he, he gives the spiel and he runs us down. He's like, oh, there's a lot, of, a lot of new guys here since I've been here last. He goes into this huge tirade putting over Kenny Omega. I saw this kid Harley race this camp. Harley race camp. He's yeah, the next Fisher. Brian Pillman. Yeah. Kenny Omega, stand up. And like, you know, everyone gets the golf clap and shit. And we're like, oh, wow. Then he goes into this whole thing about Chris Rambolo, who got signed from the Spears trial, who nobody's going to know who he was. He's looked like a million bucks. Just some kid. He was just a guy. Never was arrested. Did he get a name ever? He's just developmentally never. Uh, did you know him in... 
Yeah, well, he was he there. He was there. definitely in OVW. Yeah. Yeah. What was his name then? Chris Rambola. He like showed up once or twice. Oh, crap. Like, how, he the promo crazy. guy. He went crazy. When I am, I house. am, I am, I am, that dude. I don't remember that. Yeah, I remember his promos he big He went time. crazy and would hide in his house and yep. like, eventually that guy He like, lived well. like two doors down from me. So yeah. he puts Chris Rambola over to the moon yeah. this whole speech golf time. So Zach and I are like nudging each other. Man, this is going to be great. And he's like, that's it, right? Like, oh, wait. What are those two blonde guys? And we're like, <laughs> and we stand up and he's like, and when our hair wasn't blonde anymore, we like grew it out and we were attempting to grow it out. And it's done. What the fuck? You supposed to have blonde hair? Change that shit. And that was it. We sit down. No, no, put over nothing. He's like, whoa, this is a great start. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Change that shit. <clears throat> I feel. Uh, go oh, go ahead. No, go, go. Oh, the only other thing that I I didn't mention uh, from the tryout or extra work or whatever that might be interesting is that Regal was on us to, to get with Brooklyn Brawler and do promos. So he's like, ah, oh, get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. And mm-hmm. like, out of the other people that there, nobody else did promos. They pulled us into a promo room and we had to do a couple different, me and Claudio did a couple different promos with Bill DeMott and Brooklyn Brawler. So, and I think that was, it, the cool thing is, is they record all that stuff and they have yeah. it. So right. somebody needs to peruse something. So that was another, maybe another, you know, thing in our favor. Well, uh, were you guys like like fans of OVW? Like I like because I knew it was my goal, and I was just like kind of always. You watch the TV show. You envision show yourself you there. You see guys in PWI and stuff, and like it's just somewhere I always wanted to I, go. I think Cabana and I have yeah. an interesting OVW thing, is because we worked for IWA Mid South, mm-hmm. so there was big beef between Ian and then Danny and Jim Cornette. We were basically told when we started working there that we would never wrestle for OVW by Kenny Bolin. Yeah, and like at the time, I was like. What does that even mean? I'm, <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I'm, I'm well, you, it, ba- okay, basically, so like... 99, 2000. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, just the basis of this is Ian, when Ian left ECW and then he started running shows in Kentucky in like 96 ish, mm. um, he started doing the hardcore stuff, you know, that was popular. And uh, it, you know, maybe, maybe damaged in some armories, maybe some blood, maybe some glass or whatever. And it beca- it was such a shock and whatever that the commission, the athletic commission, was like, they created all these rules and you got to do this and you got to do this and you pay this or whatever, mm-hmm. which made it very hard to run shows in Kentucky. So, Danny Daniels and Jim Cornette. I mean, of course, Jim yeah. Cornette's going to cut Davis. promos on. Yeah. <laughs> what are the- Danny Daniels. You said Daniels. But Danny Whoa! Davis. Shout out Danny Daniels, <laughs> AAW. Danny Danny Davis, the Nightmare, yeah. and and Jim Cornette really hated Ian for, you know, for what they perceived causing it. You know, say that he like, fucked up, like yeah, and got made the athletic commission super strict. Yeah, wow. they they hated the the slice and dice as they. As so they we were kind of banned from OVW, <laughs> even though we didn't know, like yeah. You didn't even get what that meant. Yeah, well, I mean, I wasn't well, trying to wrestle people, there. Right, right. Yeah, there were people, because we also had friends at Les Thatcher's, because Les and Danny were friends, mm-hmm. but they purposely avoided, like, BJ a couple times would, like, work for IW a little bit, and then he'd kind of get told, and he'd disappear for a while. Sure. So it's like, we knew, wow. we had friends that were like, IWA, no, I'm not going to work there, because that'll ruin my chances. Do, do so remember? we were the guys who were just like, all right, yeah, whatever, let's go. I remember when I started, uh, people would say, don't work for CZW, that's a kiss of death. Right. <laughs> Did you guys ever hear that? Yeah, sure. I heard yeah. that when I started. <laughs> but I think it's cool it's going to come back a little bit because like NXT is cool so people are, it's kind of like the way it was in that sure. sense. Like I don't see if it's the man, I, just, the magazine, I know of them. You I know? think if you're good and you're around long enough you're going to get a look at For some sure, point yeah. now. It's it, The door's like kicked way open. Yeah, yeah I've, I've always, like when I came up so I'm more similar to you You two like our stories are so far off from each other. Like, I didn't know what it <laughs> yeah, was. Kind of yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't even know independent wrestling when I started wrestling. Uh, at all like I, I grasped that there had to be something but I didn't understand it and <clears throat> I feel like there's like there's three avenues to WB and it's it's either you know you be successful in some other field whether that's uh, you know you're a football player or whatever mm-hmm. and then and then you build up your stock that way or uh, you become a very well-known established independent wrestler which you know we're, we're seeing now that happen still with yeah. you know Fergal and, and Kevin and stuff or the route that I took which is essentially like I, I treated it essentially like uh, I'm going to college right now. Uh, I finished high school. I started re- pro wrestling school, and uh, if I do everything correct, I will get signed. Like I, I had a complete business plan to get signed, but had no clue how to do what to do or what. I didn't even know what my goal was after that. Mm-hmm. 
but I knew how to get signed, and it worked incredibly well and fast. Yeah. <laughs> was it like a was it like a spreadsheet that yeah. you had printed out? I'm not kidding, man. Like I mean, our coach, it was Coach Hollow at Killer School, was like he he was all about it. He was like, you have to have a business plan, you have to have like a strategy, and hmm. and it worked. Like so, it it. it and like I, I know it's funny because like, I do have people reach out sometimes like, oh, how, how do you think I get to the beauty? And it's like, well, what stage of your life are you in? Like, are you, are you an independent wrestler already who's been doing it? Are you brand new? Because if you're brand new, I, I don't, I really feel like, for lack of a better term, it's it's insanely easy. Yeah. Like, wow. I, I do. If if you're not if you're not trying to be like, hey, I'm a really good wrestler, so sign me. I think it's like, have a good body. Ask questions, be really nice, be attentive, go to every camp, do everything they ask of you. Because that's what I did. I went to every camp like, oh, like Dreamer's having a camp. Okay, uh, now uh, Bucci's having a camp. Oh, he's having another. Like, that's just, mm. uh, at the end when I got signed, it was essentially, I went to three Bucci camps in a two-month period. Mm. And at one of them, he was like, I forget, one of them, it was, it was, hey, work on this. The second one, it was, hey, what do you think? Would you cut your hair if we told you to cut your hair? The next one I showed up, would cut hair. And he was like, would you go to Harley's if we told you to go to Harley's? And the next week, I called Harley and set up something with him. And then I got a call from, from Nova. And it was like, hey, man, uh, just checking in to see what's going on with you and stuff. And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm headed down to Harley's uh, next week uh, to report there. Um, because that's what they told me to do. Yeah. Like this is, I, I just viewed it as these are college assignments. They're saying <laughs> you want a job with us, and I had so I had no ego whatsoever. I had no, there was no like there was I don't know. There and you was and you didn't have no the, bitterness. There you didn't nothing. have the personal experience of knowing somebody that went through this nothing. or being around the indies long enough. Nothing to was changing. Yeah, I feel like someone could have the same exact experience and do all that stuff and just. No, but yeah, yeah. Us, you know, like, and, and another seven years of do, yeah. do yeah. this, Possibly, now do this, yeah. now do that. Now but do it's this. Weird, like, I mean, it, I look at like the guys, so like in our group, like the, uh, Brian Mailhart, who ended up being Palmer Cannon, Kofi Kingston, myself, Chad Wicks. Like, I mean, there's a, a pretty decent list of Aaron yeah. Stevens. There's a list of us who got signed, and we all went the same exact route. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, uh, and another thing, just to add to that, helped with it is at the time we all did train at Chaotic, which was when you, when WB came to New England, just like when they go to like the Delaware area, they were going to call Kettner and say, hey, Jim Kettner, what guys can we use for extras? They were going to call Chaotic and say, hey, these are killers guys. We trust mm -hmm. them. Who can we use? So that would, that's a big part of it. We had an mm -hmm. in with that. But I never even thought for a second, like, oh, let me get to CC, CZW. Let me get to ROH. Like, that didn't even cross my mind. I was like, I could care less. Like, when I got a dark thing at ROH... And I was a lumberjack. And I remember seeing CM Punk's entrance in his music for the first time. And I was just like... Huh, this this happens at places that aren't like I was blown away yeah, by it. Shit. But with that said, I still was like, I was I, at that show in the crowd. Yeah, yeah. I, at the, I was still like, I could care less. I don't want to go there. I want to. I want Pretty to cool that there. happens, but I know my assignment, and <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, but so I, I think the, I th I do think that's a that's a true avenue that could work. Like now, I don't know. I have no idea what the steps are once you've been there and you've been fired. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what the steps are when you become an established independent name other than them seeking you out. You know, if they don't mm -hmm. seek you out, I, I, I don't, like I would, you know, what do you do? Do you call them? Who knows? Uh, everyone's mm -hmm. different. But I do yeah, think so if you're right fresh, now, man, what you're doing. yeah, if you're <laughs> fresh to it though, I really mm -hmm. think there's a, a yeah, way to do it. They love hunks of clay. Yep. You know, big hunks of clay. Young, they love hunks. good body. Oh, hunks. Oh, hunks. 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 Emphasis on the hunks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, big hunks of clay they that they it. can kind of carve around and do they this and do this. You, yeah. And, I mean, there's uh, Gerald Briscoe's gotten a lot of amateur guys in, you know, maybe a dozen in the last couple of years of like, hey, here's good. Let's see what we can do with them. You know, and there's some former football players. And, and they don't care and if, you, then, if you fail because, I mean, I, got, I didn't even get the 750 because I was not in a new name. I got the 500 a week. To, that's what I got. I thought, I thought I'd never have to work again. It was like, <laughs> yeah. that's yeah. I mean, my life. Now that, that you're like, looking at it, dude, like, okay, yeah. so they're investing twenty six thousand dollars in you. Yeah, they don't give a damn. Like, if if they hire twenty of you and only one is a success, because I they think made that's, their money back. I think that's why the idea of a hundred people in developmental is right. good because process of learning. You know, yep. hundred people in there. We'll get it, one maybe, out of every ten to six. Yeah, we'll get ten stars right. out of there. Yep. Don't work that way, right? Yeah, right but right. and I, I also don't think. I you don't, don't think, think it, it works that way. And that's and that's what they think. It, that's what they want. I th I think they get ten stars out of. I mean, they can make whoever they want a star. Well, no. Okay, so basically, yeah. my opinion on Tyson, this. Titus O'Neil's been there since two thousand nine. Hands on WWE training. He still sucks. Yeah. But so, the, but he's. They think like fans. WWE fans think he's a star. Right. 
He's it's been that, but I don't think they think he's good. And the the, no. the officer itself doesn't think he's a good wrestler. You know, like that's obvious. But he's a guy that people like do the barking, and they're like, "This is a guy. He's on our TV. He's a star." <laughs> <laughs> well, well, okay. well, well yeah, what I'm yeah, saying yeah, yeah. is, from the time that I started developmental to the time that I got let go, it had ballooned from like, you know, maybe 35 full time people with maybe 10 guys injured to like close to 70 people, yeah. and. It's just when you have that many people, it doesn't matter if you have eight coaches. You're not getting enough individual attention. And like there's, you know, there's some guys that'll cut promos and then it'll just like, they don't know, they've got so many promos to watch that they can't really, <sighs> something's missing in that, but I don't really know what it is. <coughs> Okay, let's go to the next guy. You know, whereas if it's a smaller class, and eventually they kind of did that, and they're like, all right, well, we're going to take our top dozen guys over here because they need to work on different things than this and whatever. It's still such a work in progress because this is the first time that they've had to create 100% of their talent. They always had international guys, WCW guys, mm -hmm. ECW guys, you know, uh, Former, you know, like a, like a Brock Lesnar or something that came from amateur pedigree. I always use him and Angle as your hunks of clay theory. Oh, like God. I always say this to people, like I think they ruined it for everyone because they came from another mm. walk of life, and for some reason, like we're able to pick this up yeah. really easy and were yeah. fantastic. And they took for granted that they're like these super freak, incredible, yeah. one of a kind athletes. So they're like, oh, we can do this with anybody, mm. which I always find insulting too because it's like. Oh, here's a football player. He failed at his passion. <laughs> Let's take him into this world that he knows nothing about. Sure. It's far more difficult, you know? Sure. I just thought that sucked. And I think that, I made this up in my mind, but that's what I think happened yeah, yeah. and ruined. Yeah. Well, an interesting thing talking about the hunks of clay and like the difference between. <laughs> I love well, hunks. Let's hunks, just call it hunks of clay. Hunks of clay. You're the only one talking man. about hunks of clay. Uh, with, like gray body paint. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the difference between Cabana and I and you two guys is, uh, you know, how how many matches do you think you had before you reported developmental? I know it was like. Thirty-three. <laughs> and what? in roughly, uh, if I if I hit that number, I'd be shocked. Yeah. Yeah. That that to me is so crazy. Like my thirtieth <laughs> match was, was probably I don't even want to get into. Dude, it. I mean, that was but, my next question. Oh, you, so ahead. well, it's just and then we had you know a decade a decade plus in experience, right. and then we're looked at different ways. Mm -hmm. You've got the people that are like, oh, they've got all this experience but we're going to need to fix this and fix that and whatever. And then the other people are like, there's different standards. Yeah. So if a green guy goes out there and has an absolutely terrible match, but he doesn't hurt anybody, he doesn't get hurt, Right. It's well done. Good yeah. job. Yeah. And then we go out there, and then the second gear change we do is kind of off. <laughs> it's like... Do you remember, you did you ever hear the Alpha Junior story? No. I don't know if it's our story to tell, but just, it goes along the same way of like, yeah. he had been wrestling since he was 14 years yeah. old, and he went for a trial, he was probably like 25, mm -hmm. so that's nine years, one of the family members, and he, in his tryout, acted like he didn't know how to wrestle. Like it was his first Usos day. Usos did uh, that. Usos <laughs> that's did that. That's a Samoan thing. They like, oh, that's true. Yeah. Usos had a fair amount that's of training, thing, but yeah. like... I mean, if you're Samoan, you're taking bumps when you're born, yeah, right? Crazy, yeah. So uh, the Usos did that too, where they just like... And then by the second day, they're yeah. like, this guy's picking it up amazing. It's yeah. a guy I just uh, love to learn, you know? I don't know. Maybe Alpha wasn't playing dumb, because his first day at Deep South, I'll never forget this, they threw Zach in the ring with him. They circle, he cuts Zach off, Blue Thunder driver. We're like, ah! like that, that was how we started. We were like... So, uh, so maybe he wasn't so, playing dumb. So he, he hadn't been called up or anything. He was just a developmental guy when he did that. That was his first day reporting. Oh, his first. Like, oh, Bill's Jesus. Bill's like, hey, oh, Brett Majors, get in there with, with Alpha and see what, see what he's got. Oh, uh, shit. Like, like, huge so pop. But that, that was going to be my next question. Like, I know when I went, and I'm sure you were the same, we were green as goose shit. Oh, so, yeah. like, going to practice every day was, like, a welcoming thing. Was that, like, for journeyman guys like you, where you were like, what the fuck is this? Like, going to do forward rolls and oh, shit? Oh, God. Like, how did you deal with that? I remember, well, I remember Tommaso and I rolled around. Remember that day? I remember this so well. Yeah. Oh, man. No, it was just weird because it was such a weird, it was just such a weird dynamic of yeah. of people and lives and the careers. Yeah. Um, it was like where I thought I had to roll around more to like show people that I wanted it, but I really didn't want to because like my body hurt because I've been wrestling for so long. 
And Tommaso was, was like had, had thirty matches, um, yeah. right? Such a, I remember you arriving, and at this time because I did that that lumberjack match and had fat pants uh, Todd Sinclair, you know, at my school. I started to watch some ROH. So when you were arriving, I was thinking this is so cool because there weren't a lot of. While I was super green, I didn't feel like there was a lot of really good workers down there. And I at just, OVW? At OVW. And I remember when you were coming, like I, I really liked Mike Krul and Spears and Cody, and Cody even was super green. But when you were coming, I just remember thinking, like, oh, this is like a fresh thing. Like, this is new, and he's experienced and stuff. And thinking, like, I want to get in the ring with this guy. Like, that was, like, my thing. And I don't know what class it was of yours, but I just I do remember we stayed after class. Yeah. And I remember Al was... At first, he was either in the back, and then he came to the desk, but he had watched us for a while wrestle. And I remember thinking, like, like you were wrestling yourself. Like, you were putting yourself in stuff yeah. and out of stuff. And just really thinking, like, how do I become that good? Like, that was really my mindset. It was just like, how is this guy doing this? How is he? Like, I was blown away. And then afterwards, Al, say, he complimented you, saying that, like, you did a lot of stuff that he hasn't seen since the 50s and 60s and 70s and, stuff. and I just remember thinking like like oh my god like I right, right that instant and I don't think we ever talked about this I had that moment where I said I did this all wrong I should have <laughs> I should have went and learned how to wrestle <laughs> and then come here and then and then not not very shortly after that you made your debut in Davis Arena yeah. and your music hit and you came out and the place exploded yeah. and when I came out for my debut match one person maybe in the crowd was like, I think that's the kid who played penmanship back in the Northeast. <laughs> so I remember seeing that debut and thinking, holy crap, look how over he is. And that, and, and obviously it didn't work out exactly this way, you know, because your story tells differently. But just thinking, look how much easier it's going to be for this guy right, yeah, yeah. compared to me who I'm coming here and I have to really retrain this audience of who the hell I am and not have. So it was like, it was a really eye opening moment for me. Like between, it was between the workout session, Al putting you over, and then, and then your debut match. Did thinking you, like, wow. Once you had that moment, um, did you start doing anything differently to like, oh, I need to get on the Cole Cabana level? Um, because of how things went for me, I don't think I had the opportunity because I, my... How, how long were you in developmental? Seven, six to seven months. Six to seven but months. But my... With, 67 uh, months. 67 <laughs> months. That's Byron Saxon. That's Byron Saxon. <laughs> <laughs> the numbers right there. But my, uh, my second or third week in, I had a match and I tore ligaments in my ankle. And it really, really inhibited me a lot when I was down there because I became a manager for... I mean, I was a manager for, for nearly four and a half five months mm -hmm. by the time I healed and was ready to be in the ring I was in the ring for two weeks and got fired so I never really well, it, it became a process of hey I'm going to start watching tapes of these guys but I don't think I ever got to actually get in the ring and apply it damn yeah so. what was your man that's pretty close after an injury yeah really fast yeah it was injury uh, came back Al and I had sat and actually for the first time he said hey we're going to actually come up with a TV angle for you because we had already killed off the Dr. Thomas manager character, knowing that I was I was getting ready to come back, yeah. but we didn't have an idea for how to bring you back. I remember doing with Cody in the mask, and then he used my Matt classic mask. Your Matt classic yeah. mask. I don't remember. Was that, that the angle? That nope. That was just um, as I was approaching getting healthy, but Dr. Thomas was still a thing. Uh, they were Did like, "Well, let's start to do getting with Dr. You Tom, out. Dr. Thomas, Dr. Tom, anything." No, Any correlation? I have no idea no. why that name even came about. Because he was the anger management. Yeah, anger yeah. management specialist. It was actually like a cool. I liked it. Yeah, I liked it too. Right? Yeah. It worked with ox and hammer, so I was always. Yeah, always I mean, for that it. purpose, and I mean, we yeah. almost got called up to TV for it and stuff, and it yeah. was one of those things where even then I remember, I'm trying to think of who it was that sat with me. I, it could have been Al, but I feel like it wasn't, but maybe it was Al that they sat with me and were like, you guys might get called up to TV, me, Ox, and Hammer. And they were like, do you really want to get called up to TV as a manager? And it was one of those other moments where I was just like, I don't know. The, the, I had a lot of questionable moments down there where I was like, like, what, what am I doing? Like, what the hell? You know? Um, so as a, journey, as a journeyman, what was it? What, I, I always call it Groundhog Day in developmental. It's great. Every day is Groundhog Day. Yeah. You're just like, yeah. you wake up like, holy shit, doing this again. The stretch routine, yeah. literally just the same shit. Yeah, and I and I right, I had put in a lot of time and a lot of years, and like it was just like, 
I remember Punk saying to me that like gone are the days of going right to TV. Like you have, you just have, it's something you have to do. You have to go yeah. through it, and so, um, you know, I was just like, I, this is what I guess I have to do, and uh, yeah, I, you know, I, it took a couple of probably years off of my body, unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. and you know, but I don't know. I just I always thought it was like I just have to do this. Mm-hmm. That's I have no choice. I was blown away by the drastic difference of deep south practice and. OVW practice. When I got there, I was yeah. like, oh my god, this is cake compared to what we were doing. Yeah. So Were you at, yeah, Position. you were at Deep South when Claudio came and got his tryout. I was there for the whole thing, yeah. yeah. He rocked yeah. it. Yeah. It was cool. <laughs> Claudio, Heath Slater, Kofi, and Rob. Uh, Rob, yeah. he, Rob Egotistico. Uh, and Fantastico. Keith Walker. And Keith Walker, Keith yeah. Walker. And they all got hired. Were you down there when I got my tryout at Deep South? No. I didn't think so. I don't remember that at all. Yeah, I don't think you were. Was that after OVW? No, 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 before I got, I, I actually had a tryout maybe this guy. Six, yeah. six to eight months before I actually got signed. I had a tryout and they passed on me and then they signed. That's oh, why I'm telling, like it, my, my whole beginning of my career was so insanely different. <laughs> it, it was yeah. the weirdest, yeah. Guys, you know, guys 30 <laughs> matches in are trying to get booked once a month, you know, like, oh God, I yeah. can't talk to this promoter. Yeah. Uh, I could care less about getting indie bookings. I was like, I'll yeah. work chaotic, and if somebody like if, if if a promoter contacted me or something, I would take it. And it was just the mindset was just I'm gonna get my body in good shape, tan, learn how to sleep. Mm-hmm. You know? It was funny. It was like in deep south, we we're doing all these drills and like like you said, taking you're taking check marks off the bump card. Like yeah. T- typical, just real quick, typical OBW day of training. So you well, let's do deep south first. Oh, but didn't you? It started oh. in deep south. Oh, never mind. For the yeah, record, I'm, I'm, I, th- I think I'm the only guy to ever be in all of them. Because the deep south, the OVW, main roster, FCW, main roster again. You did some performance and center. And then they fucking sent yeah. me to the performance center for a month wow. on the way out. So I have literally the gauntlet of developmental yeah. life. It was, it was a fun month, though. <laughs> You just, month. I told my fiance this like if you weren't there I would have went crazy I said Chris saved me like this is when you went back to this uh, is the summer of 2013 the you yeah, and yeah. Zeke was there too yeah yeah, yeah. It was wow. very and strange. we had we had Lance as a guest one week so yeah I mean you know. I, I embraced it as much as I sure. could it was Corano called me I'm just like driving he's like I'm like oh this is bad it was like on a Saturday afternoon he's like we came up with this thing uh, we're gonna have you go to the performance center for a month so like I would commute Sunday night, I would fly there. They put me up, rail car, everything. I'd report Monday morning and then just go every day and then fly out Friday. And mm-hmm. I did it for a full month. Mm-hmm. The, and the interesting thing I thought about that was that you weren't at any of our shows. And I thought that, like, I mean, full sale, yeah. But, I, like, the live, I, live I, events. I, got, I did one. I wrestled Rusev. Okay, you wrestled Rusev on uh, one. At the old FCW. And event. I always thought the benefit of having somebody that had been a main, you know, been in main event angles and pay per views and stuff like have a you know work with a couple different guys mm-hmm. so that they can just learn from the experience or something like that. It's <laughs> funny you said that because the complete opposite is what happened. That for instance, that show I did with Rusev was in the old FCW building. Bill DeMont's on a headset and I was trying, I never dealt with him, especially developmental. He's on a headset and he's He's literally not letting us do a thing. He's trying to call do this. like my yeah, heat, do this. and I'm trying yeah. to tell him stuff. But then the refs tell him like, "No, he wants to do this." And it was just like the worst situation. It was so like counterproductive, and I was like, "Yeah." I and sometimes have, the like, refs get nervous. So yeah, they're, like, they're there, so super and, nervous. And also the way they talk to you makes you kind of tense up a little bit. Yeah. Like, wait, what? I don't understand. Well, the ref's just as nervous because he knows he's going to get chewed out if we're not doing what he's yeah. saying to. It was just such a horrible situation. Yeah. I'm like, why? Why? And it was just something I never dealt with, you know? Yeah, and eventually they did that on... They used to just do it at the FCW building because that's where we did our FCW TV uh-huh. and then whatever. And then eventually it extended to live events where we were doing live events like TV it, where we had, you know, obviously full producers with everything, yeah. um, you know, headset, refs, whatever. We would do break spots just so the guys could get used to doing break spots. That's sort of wow. a terrible idea. No, not a terrible idea, yeah, but it's just like... You'd, sometimes they would, and they would also kind of. Uh, hey, this isn't a bad idea either. They would kind of spur things on you, like tell you, "Oh, okay, no, you can't, you can't use the turnbuckles anymore," something like that. And you're like, some of the guys have to think outside the box. That's yeah. how our classes were back home mm-hmm. before. Somebody just because we were so trained for that system. Yeah, that's exactly how we. Deep South was class. always um, like four dark matches technically, and then four-ish on the TV show every Thursday when we taped them and yeah. the four darks would always have no kicking, no punching, yeah. 
couple mm. things like what that. Was which the, actually, what like, was embrace because it makes sure, you think sure. and be different, you know. What was the experience like, like for you guys? Okay, so, like, for me, there was this moment, and I can't remember if this was before Hurt. I think it was after Hurt as I was coming back. Uh, you might remember him. Do you remember he was unsigned? His name was George, and he had a really big head. He oh, was, yeah, his weird Santino's yeah, buddy. Yeah, Santino's looking, buddy there. Like, super scary looking. Yeah. I, there was a period where I had to work George at every show hmm. for, like... At, okay, this was 100% before I got hurt. For every show for... I mean, it had to be a good three, four weeks. And the rule in our match was a headlock match. But the way I was trained, a headlock match meant, like get in and out of a headlock many different ways. Yeah. But the way Al wanted it was uh, we start the match, we lock up, George puts me in a headlock, and I do not get out of that headlock at all until finally I throw three shots to his gut, count him, one, two, three, push him off the rope, baseball slide, drop kick him, and pin him. Nothing could change in that match, and I had to do that every single. And and I mean, I would go to Al and just be like, "Please, man, I'm not getting over." And he, and I, I I don't, and I would, and then like I got to the point where I said to him, like, and I mean, again, I don't think me and you ever talked about this, but I said, "Could you, could you give me, could you give me Colt?" Or Sean and have me do the same match, being Spears, have me do the same match with them. Like I feel like at least, at least maybe I could get something out of it. And and that needs to be a best of DVD. <laughs> the baseball slide drop. Yeah, yeah. Sorry for the fans. He, and yeah. of the fans, the war- you know, there's there's some fans that are probably like hit him with a damn drop kick. <laughs> <laughs> How, how's, yeah, especially how's, Kentucky. Yeah, yeah how's them, yeah. George keep falling for the damn thing? <laughs> <laughs> that drop kick must have some behind. Yeah, but it was, uh, and uh, he would tell me that he was teaching me how less is more, how I'll make the one bump count, the pop for the bump, and all. And I just, like, I mean, we we would go at it, and, and not in a way of, like, I was trying to fight the system because I was being as nice as I could. I was, like, walking on eggshells. But, I mean, and just being told how stupid I was and stuff. And it was just a horrid experience of just thinking, like, especially now, now that I, I'm so far apart from it, and I look at him like, what does that teach anyone? And I remember, uh, I kid you not, man. So I, I hurt my, I hurt my ankle for, with uh, Aaron Stevens or Damian Sandow. I hurt my ankle. I'm out for all this time. I'm do. Eventually, I'm doing a, a Black Star Prodigy. I think I called that mask yeah, gimmick. Right. And then I finally get that off. And I'm not kidding you. The whole time I'm away for injury, George disappears. Because George is a little strange dude, and I yeah, have I remember visa not issues. Being there just disappears. And, and I am not kidding you. Al tells me, okay, this Friday you're going to get back into the show, and don't you think George shows up on Thursday? <laughs> I, I, I just, honest to God, thought about quitting that day. I was like, I can't, I can't do another week. I can't even do another match of a headlock match. With now, do you, think, do you think George was content with that? Do you think he's just like... Yeah, every time like, we finish the match and every time Al's giving us feedback, George is listening so intently oh, yeah. like he's going to figure out the secret to making this match work as I'm sitting there thinking like there's two secrets one remove you from the match and two allow us to do something <laughs> entertaining now also how was the headlock was it a stiff, stiff. <laughs> <laughs> no not just was the headlock stiff the, the one, whole body the, the one stiff. thing he was 100% stiff in everything he did in his that whole match. movement like you couldn't even oh my, dude I can't explain well, how frustrating that process was. Like, so, was, did you guys have anything like that? Well, that your... system was especially when in OVW. It wasn't, and, and Brian could attest to it, and I can even say later when, you know. And my old big thing was that they never, there's never any communication from up top to real what they bad. wanted yeah, down it. So it was literally, it was there wasn't a curriculum or there wasn't a hey we want this. It was just whatever Al wanted to do, and Al thought that that was. How you that's he that was his vision of wrestling, right. not WWE's. And his vision of wrestling is way better. He thinks he knows the exact science to it, you know, or whatever it is. And that's that's probably for a whole different sh- uh, show. But it wasn't like it was just like that was just him. It wasn't like this is what we need out of you, these to get these guys yeah, better. Right. And um, and I think that was kind of it was very yeah. counterproductive. Yeah, and I, I never, I think I'll hate it. Zach and I from the moment he laid eyes on us. <laughs> but um, we never got along. But I really didn't like his... The way... It was so strange to go from deep cells where we were killing our fucking cells like, to the point where like Zach would have to eat uh, as much ice cream as he could before he fell asleep because we were burning so many calories during the day and his metabolism was that fast. that like oh. That's how f- insane these practices were. To where we go to OBW and now we're just Spew his bullshit from yeah. you wouldn't even break a sweat. You'd just be filibustering. It, 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 you would just be leaning on the apron, listening to him like, "Holy was, shit!" There was a and class they, at, with Al, and I, I bet you guys will remember it when I start saying it, where 
He had two guys get in the ring, and I want to say Roadkill was one and, and someone else. And he is, the, the instruction was he sat on the top corner. We all stood on, on the floor around the ring. And he said, you are not to move a muscle or do anything that I don't instruct you to do. And he would then tell them, like, okay, walk three paces forward, lock up. And they'd lock up and say somebody, like, he would say grab an arm and say somebody grabbed the arm and then, like, grabbed it and did an arm ringer. Did I tell you to do an arm ringer? Oh, and the whole match was based around, like, Simon how says. Roadkill... <laughs> Is a big guy, and he's there. He's trying to, and I just remember watching it and just thinking, like, we've spent three hours, got four minutes into this match, and I'm sitting there as a green, as as mm-hmm. hell, thinking, like, well, who is this benefiting? Like, wh- I think, oh man, it's, I don't know if this is really a theory that just popped in my head, but <laughs> like, because they came up in the territory system, oh, it definitely is a they, southern thing. Is that what you're thinking about? Well, no, I'm just saying, I don't, they didn't have regimented wrestling training, gotcha. They just learned on the yeah. job. Yeah. So, when it comes time and you got a class of people, there's yeah. that, uh, it's, it's that pressure to like, all right, I need to make them better wrestlers. Right. Uh, let's and, come up and, with a drill and make the day go, and by. then, and yeah. then also, also, when you come up with the drill. It takes a lot of, you know, it takes a lot of, how do you go, all right, that drill sucks, sorry guys, let's try something else. Mm-hmm. It's just like, no, do this drill. Yeah. We'll do it, yeah. you know. You know, the other problem too, with not the other problem, but in our time developmental is, um, you're, we're trying to get these guys ready for TV. We're yeah. trying to make their bodies as, as great as possible. Mm-hmm. Uh, a, being on $500 and then not, I, I can't believe they don't have a protein um uh, sponsorship that yeah. gives everybody just free everything. Oh, I can't yeah. believe it. It's still nothing, but it's you know, but yeah. it's still like, hey, you guys need to eat. You need to be, you need to be big. That's part of the job. And we would be there from fucking nine in the morning to to three at night with with uh, to three in the afternoon. Yeah. And uh, nobody's eating. Nobody's getting protein yeah. every two hours. Chet Chablonski is under the ring trying <laughs> to eat chicken breast. Yeah. You know, or eggs yeah. and oatmeal. Yeah. yeah. Mason Sweating. Ryan type shit, trying to yeah. Like, keep the muscle. Yeah. And it's like that shouldn't be a thing. Yeah. Like it, these guys, especially the body guys, and especially yeah. maybe even a guy like me who they're like, "Cold, get your body better." Mm. Well, I can't when it's yeah. when I'm when Al's doing a six hour seminar every. Yeah. Single day with yeah. no breaks. Well, I think that's also because it comes from these three guys are telling us to do these six things, and then there's certain this contradicts that. Oh, there's the, that, the, and you're trying to. The yeah. guest trainer problem was always the thing. Oh yeah, a guest oh, trainer. Man, I, I guess a always. guest trainer will come in. <laughs> yeah, let's explain what then, a guest trainer is. Yeah, uh, I, don't, I guess they still do it. Like we just had Lance. Oh yeah, they they actually do it. They do it a lot down at the performance okay. center, so which is trainers. Man, it was few and far between when yeah. I was there, but like uh, we. I guess Robert Gibson had a job, so that doesn't count. Yeah, we had Dr. Dr. Death. Death. Um, great, the Great Ganya era, where, did you catch that? Oh, Woo! Was yeah. that something else, man? Like Son of a bee. Bill would like, Greg Ganya would come. We'd have a full-blown Bill practice. Greg Ganya would come in the afternoon, and Bill would like dismiss like, the Gemini and Knox and Gallows, all the guys he liked. And then like, me, Kenny Omega, and Zach, and just like the younger green guys would have to stay and train with Greg. And then he'd be, this guy hadn't, Literally hadn't watched wrestling since like 1989, like cold turkey. And he's trying to show us all this wacky shit that people don't do anymore. Like, I remember take tackles and not bump back, but bump like to the yeah. side. Trying to justify him being there though. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. And we're in there and like, I'm talking three hours, sweating, doing all this thing, whatever he's saying, doing all this crazy shit, relearning stuff. Yeah. And then he'd like leave and Bill come out of the office and goes, hey, whatever he just said, don't fucking, yeah. it's nothing. Yeah. So I'm like, what the fuck are we doing? This is bullshit. But it's like, this funny. Yeah. like because there was once like Brian Blair came to FCW and he was like, I'm you know, I know so much and I'm gonna teach you stuff that you guys never seen, like skin in the cat. And we were like <laughs> And it's just like they, they, they have to think that like, oh, I have to bring something that nobody else is teaching. And so in his mind it was like, I guess no one's I bet no one's teaching skin in the cat here. Yeah. And like, you know, so it's like Greg Iron is like, oh, how can I justify too much myself? Fucking anyway? emphasis on what to teach and not how to teach. Mm-hmm. It's like Everybody learns in a different way, and I think when you te- try to teach thirty people the same way, you're, some people are going to get lost. Some people are going to get lost in the shuffle, and you just—it's it happens in schools. You know what I mean? There's kids that you just force them through a public school in the same curriculum, and it's just people are going to drop out because they can't handle things. But if you get more individual attention, or and it, some people need tough love, you know, some people need to be spoon fed. Mm-hmm. You know, it's and it, a good trainer, a good teacher can figure that out and I mean that's that's 
you you always hear about it. You know, there's like the kid that was having trouble, and then he found his one teacher that like inspired him and motivated him, and, and you know, then he became a, a millionaire. <laughs> you know, there's there's stories like that, but I think. Yeah, it's, oh, we got to teach you this and this and this. It's not how you teach them. Did anybody of you guys have a, a developmental guy that you, like, thought was, like, this guy's becoming my, you are the man now, dog? What's that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, dog. Yeah. Uh, what do you mean by that? Like, uh... I mean, I think everyone, like, I've always said in my career, like, I've never had anyone that's really championed me. Right. But, uh... You know, I guess like man. I mean, Nor- I guess Norman's a, like for a lot of guys. Mm-hmm. Norman Smiley is it, who just um, always thought I was great. Like he was always, always told me he, I was better than him. You know, yeah. like it's like I can't learn anything from you. Yeah, you can yeah, learn from that's, you know. That's Norman. That's how he is, man. So and that makes you feel good as like a trainer. Like I, I yeah. like big ups to Norman. You know. Yeah, like, and here's the thing, he can say that to you. But you you know that he knows a plethora of shit right. that you can, and, I, and it's just it's just like a mutual respect. And, but I like, respect him as my trainer. Hell yeah! I'm not gonna. And that was a, a, you know a problem with some of the guys where they speak down to you, speak down to you, speak down to you. And I don't respect them as people. But it's like the guys who can be on your level. But you know that I respect them in, in that trainer <laughs> way. Yeah, right. I always had a problem with like Bill and Al, where I always got the sense that they wanted to be in our shoes and get one more run. Yeah. Whereas like. Dr. Tom and Norman weren't like that and it made a world of difference, you know, like the way Dr. they went Tom about things, you know, like, it, we, I just felt like they were a little bit more bitter and wishing, you know, it was we, strange. We had a lot of talks, um, there would be some kind of funny talks about how, you know, in our day we could have done this, but you guys can't get away with that, haha, like, yeah. but then there was also the, like, it was... A bunch of different times in these big group speeches and whatever, and you're trying to read between the lines, and and it's you're almost kind of being shamed for having as many resources as you have. In, in that's, my stage, that's what I said I, in the beginning. Like, yeah. We went to the territory, like, well, fuck, we all love wrestling. Yeah. we would have done the same thing. And yeah, and if it's, it was the option. And well, you you know you have all these rings and you have this and you got all the footage and you got these coaches and you yeah. got we didn't have any of that. Yeah, so but, so, so you kind of well. I can't help that. I'm yeah. in this system, so why is that even a thing? Like, <laughs> like it's it's one thing it's one thing to make sure that we genuinely appreciate it. And every now and again, like guys, oh, like I always say this. I was a tape trader, and I had all this footage. I, I talked to guys today, and I'm like, "Yo, YouTube, you can find anything." Like realize how lucky you are yeah, because I had fourth generation copies of Michinoku Pro <laughs> that like I'm like I can't tell who's who yeah. you know yeah. so it's the same it's okay to every now and again say just remind everybody hey listen appreciate this because yeah. of that and a lot of us really did but every now and again it's kind of like you've got it really good which is I hope you know bullshit to resent us for you know for sure, for sure Dr. Death was a big uh, that was it Remember yeah, his should... book quiz? Oh shit! Oh man, tell that story. <laughs> uh, I, I don't. I don't even know if I could do it. Uh, Zach and I got right. out of it because we were on the road, uh, really? so like we didn't have to participate in it. I just remember that we had to read. Uh, do you do you remember the detail? Listen, I, I, I know we had called, to read the book. He called Bucci like practically crying. He was so sad that no one read his book. Yeah, we had to read the book, yeah. and then it was a he, pop quiz. He didn't. No, he didn't. He he, thought, he gave us the fucking book. <laughs> <laughs> Never said that we had to read it, and and, there's, and like I have like, yeah, see, like I wasn't there for the. Well, I hate it. reading. Yeah, not a question. Were we not told we had to read it? Because for some reason he did not. He did not he say did there was going to be a fucking quiz. I remember there was not. We were not told there was a quiz, but I thought <laughs> maybe we were just it was just suggested to us. Sure, that we and like strongly suggested. Maybe I, I would have. <laughs> we, we were doing it. so much shit, man. We were so training. Much, yeah. and, and, like, and, I don't fucking then, love and, wrestling. And I don't watch wrestling. Hold on. The second you even say the word book, and if it doesn't have the word ing at the end of it command it to yeah i don't read like i have undiagnosed but, adhd but, i don't read man I'll best, fucking do you listen. remember the quiz because i specifically remember one of the questions of the quiz was who was uh dr Dutt's roommate roommate in his sophomore year of college, <laughs> of college and it did, I remember it was the answer. Was it multiple choice? Oh, was no. A, you had to just know the answer. I remember the answer now. You I what? We're going to realize what a shit storm this caused. Like a beat. Yeah. Like, oh, uh, my it God. Was, it was Rick Steiner. Oh, no. Was it a wrestler? No, I thought. Yeah. 
Because here's, the here's, what here's what happened. They went to different colleges. Here's what happened. Michigan. Why oh, do they, you know oh, this? They, well, it, <laughs> I don't think it was college's second year of wrestling. Like, well, I, in Oklahoma, oh, I don't know. Oh. But anyways, I got so fucking. I didn't read this fucking thing because I hate fucking <laughs> no, reading. And then I got. And then everyone got yelled at. We got called. Bucci fucking called, threatened to fire me like everybody yeah. else. Yeah, I got yelled at. Two man. people did it right. I remember trying to. I remember like I was back. I hated school. I hated school so much. I went to college and graduated. I hated so much. And she got half my test. I remember like looking over at Ray Gordy's paper like to see because I was like, oh well, Ray Gordy probably read it because it's Gordy and Williams. I was yeah. like, what do you got for that? And I was like, it's like I realized I fucking flunked. So I got that call, and then I that day I I stayed up for fucking whatever it was, and I read the whole fucking book thinking maybe there would be like another wow. quiz. So that it would like, Ooh. yeah, and I so like I, to this day. yeah, I'm like maybe you hate books even more. <laughs> like, it might be. I'm a wrestling book like nerd, and I read everything. I just read Kamala's book in like two days. Like, I read everything. Yeah. I read like half of Doctor Tazza. I mean, I mean it, was it was bad. Was, the parts wasn't. I read were really bad, dude. And it, it had religious undertones, overtones. It turns into that. Yeah. Like they all do. He, yeah. he and he played. He then played a. He played a, a video of him. Do you remember this? Uh, he played a video of him like preaching Jesus or something. I don't remember that. Yeah, he made us watch it. I just remember being like, "Hey, I'm Jewish. Well, I'm not gonna watch it." I, and I did. I did like, and that has nothing to do with anything. But it's yeah. just like, and like I know you can't have religion in the workplace. Yeah. Like I know that. So like I I, I remember yeah. like boycotting it and I refused to watch. He made everyone watch and I refused and I like went and did something else while he did it. Like in my own little protest. Thinking that he might then have a quiz on that, but being like, you can't do religion in the workplace. Well, like, I mean, crossing the line with things like that was the Make a Deal Friday and Deep South mm -hmm. shit that we did all the time. Mm -hmm. Like, we're yeah. like absolutely insane if you think about it. Or yeah. the office knew what was going on and stuff, you know. Yeah. I remember like one of them was like super dangerously having a shopping cart races. We went next door because Deep South was in a shopping mm -hmm. uh, mall. The outdoor shopping mall, and we got shopping carts, and we had to have races around the whole complex. Putting someone part inside in a cart. So we're like beeline. That's like, like NXT season one. Holy! It was like, crap. Yeah. That. That's where they got the idea. There's a bunch of them I remember. Like, this so is how to get better. And at the time, we had right. to. Uh, this is the weirdest, and I remember doing it because I was on the team with Brooke Adams. It was like the best butt in wrestling, and uh, we had to put quarters Just throw that in there. We had to put quarters yeah, in our butt. And walk with the quarters in her butt, and then there'd be a solo cup what? at the end of like a relay race, and try to get it in the cup, and like, what? Yeah, the shit, like shit like that. What? That was one for sure. There's the the donut thing with Zach is out there now, which is like, which this was is wild, mind blowing. Yeah, but the training was so hard, you'd want it, right? It, it was called Make a Deal Friday, and basically, Deep South would be Monday, Tuesday. No air conditioning in the place, right? Um, because no, I, yeah, yeah they, like. The, the practice would be so intense and hard, they'd take the canvas off and throw it over the bleachers to dry out every day because they would just oh, be yeah. so because we're all just killing yeah. ourselves. But it'd be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, training, promos on Wednesday. Um, Thursday, we had the TV, which we had to be there at like noon for you there all day. Everyone would go out and get fucking shit faced at the one bar in town <laughs> Thursday night, and we'd be right back in at 8 a.m. for tape review, which was with Jody Hamilton talking all like slow and breaking shit down. Like, Hung over like brutal, oh, like sitting there. We get a break, and you're supposed to train. So if you could come up with a pitch to humiliate yourself, basically, Bill would take that instead of running into like a real, like real deal, like shit practice where like you didn't want to do it. Um, yeah. Were you there for the first time that happened, or no? It was already a thing. It was already a thing. I, we okay. Deep South started in. The summer of 05, there's like 11 people. Yeah. Is there and anybody left on the roster from the first Deep South class? Dude, fucking Connor from the Ascension. Yeah. yeah. And he did, Lasting he was gone back. for a couple of years and he then quit, came, back. came back. When I did my tryout at Deep South, they, they had to make a deal Friday back See? then. And yeah. That was interesting. It was something else. And then it was, it was funny because sometimes it would be like fun, you know, so it wouldn't be the worst. Ours was a fun one. I don't but remember. But then Bill would always there. like, I, I found this out years later. He'd always bury us around our back. Like if someone like Ben Luck came into training, or something like, "Oh, this is this is what they're willing to do to get out of training." Well, you know, bury us. So like, even when it was like, you know, most times it would be fun shit. Yeah. You know, where we didn't mind doing, but wow. pretty wild in that in that work setting. You sure. Know? Um, it was that when it was corporate. Yeah, I mean, of course. Yeah. No, I mean when uh, it became public. I'm sorry. This WWE stock that was like ninety nine two thousand right. I thought it was like 2006. What, is it, what counts when they go on the stock market? Yeah. That was no, that was like, it was a while ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, 
Uh, okay, so I started February 2012. Uh, Dr. Tom's head coach. Uh, he's got uh, Steamboat. Uh, Steve Kern is, you know, every now and again, you know, he'll come in and help with the class. He or never whatever. did anything else there. Yeah. Great guy, like, yeah. funny guy. He's like, a great guy for tape yeah. review. Um, I like Steve a lot. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. He was a guy that I really had to win over. I think I had to win him and Doc over because they're old school wrestler guys and I'm indie guy that came in mm-hmm. and there's just an automatic assumption of like... Oh yeah, a stink. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's just like, oh, we're going to... Whether they've had bad experiences with guys before or whatever, mm-hmm. they're just going to think... He's gonna think he knows it all, and we gotta whatever. <laughs> yeah, even yeah. even if you do nothing to perpetuate that, yeah, for sure. And then, God forbid, the second you do something, it confirms all the you know. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so I really had to win those two guys over, and then by the you know by the end, like there are two guys that I res- I, I respect all of them, but I had a real strong respect for them, and they really looked out for me, mm-hmm. and and uh, you know two guys I still chat with on occasion, so. And those guys, I uh, had Coach Steamboat. Um, Most long-winded. Holy. Yeah. Ooh. yeah. Oh. Steamboat? Ooh. I mean, when you're doing a long... Yeah. Some feedback from him, man. You're yeah. just like... You're doing a long training day, and you know, it's like, you just want... Like, I, I, I know we get it. We appreciate it. We're here. We love wrestling, but it's just like, we want to go home. <laughs> These yeah. days are so long. We just want to go home, and then Steamboat goes into an hour and a half spiel. And it's just I like, someone at PWS, and I said, how, I said it was, how's Richie? And like my my music was playing, it was like, it was like yeah, that ran out of yeah. shit. Yeah. Um, and you cherish that time off, and you're just waiting for it, and he like cuts into it. It's like yeah. you fucking. Suck. But you do like it when it takes up the whole practice. Sure, like, oh, yeah. Okay. If that was earlier in the day, yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah, if shit's yeah. vibing, and you don't realize the time. That's the when I when I sure. teach my school, when that happens. I'm like, yeah. oh wow, that was fucking great. Right, but and you're supposed to stop playing, but I got. Caught on hip tosses and yeah. the whole day. But if you're supposed to get out at four o'clock and he's starting to spill at three fifty, and then and that Kevin goes Keenan's to seven. For you at yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we also had Norma Smiley. Um, we had Dusty Rhodes, right? And we also had Joey Mercury. I don't know if I said him in the first mm-hmm. part. Uh, so God, on, so many guys. On paper, you look at that and it's like such a vast array of like I, I was I was very happy I'm like oh okay cool whatever and when I started we had we, there were two classes there was the morning class and then there was the afternoon class and I, I was put in the afternoon class uh, and I think morning class was like some of the more experienced guys mm-hmm. uh, but then afternoon class ended up being all the girls and a lot of the second generation people and then a few other people, like maybe like Biggie and Byron and myself and whatever, which is cool because the guys I knew from the Indies were all in the first class, mm-hmm. and then I'm in this later class, so I'm getting to know people that you know whatever. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I I just went in so optimistic and like, all right, cool. Um, I'm not gonna you know because they have all these different blow up drills. Doc Tom had a couple different things. I'm like never gonna get blown up in any of these. I'm gonna you know get all these things. Every little technique they tell me, I'm gonna make sure. I'm gonna make a mental note. Uh, and I'd also been. I mean, I was living with Claudia at the time, and he started five months earlier. Mm-hmm. So I you know we'd have conversations. He'd be like, Hey man, look out for this. Keep out for this. Da, da, da. So I just went in there with with that kind of expectation, and um, then. Uh, Terry Taylor got hired, so he came in. Got so many um, coaches. And it was kind of, I don't know, it was, I think it was, there wasn't a whole lot of direction because it was like, who's teaching what for this, for that, for it? And it, that's when it becomes, well, we've got four different people producing stuff. This guy likes this, this guy likes that, this guy uh, likes this. I, this I, I think it, it's like this, this system will never. It, it, they're out there, and it's maybe it's gotten better or changed, but it, it will never be perfected. I don't think you know, like, uh, and mainly because there's if there's a hundred guys, ten go to the roster, and 90, 90 don't. Yeah, yeah, you know. So there's always these tales like this, and it's like, I mean, who knows if this is bitter? I don't, you know, I don't, you know, like, I, but it's like this is a, these are tales from guys who um, didn't make it to the roster. I know, and I, you know, you did, but like. So maybe like it's a weird how our vantage point is yeah. like. Well, it's not. It's it's not that good. But who knows if yeah. Dolph Ziggler is like it's amazing, or if Sheamus is like, yeah, no, nope, the system's I, perfect. I, th- I think um, it goes back to the individual training. Like, let's you know, let's let's 
break these guys down and like, all right, analyze these people. This guy is good at this, needs this, da 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 da, da. and then give a coach like five guys, you know, five guys, five girls, whatever, and like works with them for like a solid month, right. as opposed to like a class of thirty. I mean, we ended up doing classes of twenty at the performance center, yeah. but still, it's just it's it's hard to grasp because we're all being trained the same way, all doing the same things, right. all hearing the same things. Oh, yeah. In our time, it was it one ring, forty guys around a ring with one dude. Just uh, yeah. Know. So there's a lot of let your body cool down, take a bunch of bumps. Let Whoa. your body cool down, take yeah. a bunch of bumps. Um, just so standing around the ring is not good for your back. <laughs> you know, really. really. Medically speaking. Yeah. yeah. Um, something that always bothered me, and this goes on on the road too, is that we're all being like report carded, and you don't know that information, which is like. Yeah. So fucking stupid. It's like, okay, if you if you do something the coaches absolutely hate on a regular basis, you don't even know it because they just write it in a report that goes to the office yeah. and just being buried in like, what's the point of that? And that happens in WWE too because every live event has a uh, report. And then know. sometimes there's situations where they're telling so many guys so many different things that they may have thought they told you not to do this anymore uh, and yeah, they haven't sure. because I've, I've heard, I overheard people saying something like, told him not to do that why is he doing it you know whatever and it's like actually no he thinks he's supposed to do that like there was no conversation sure, or yeah. maybe you told the producer and he didn't I don't know it's just it's it's not as uh, it's not as transparent you know it's yeah. not hey this is what it is here it's like we're gonna say this read between the lines and then try to figure it out on your own and then hope you've got a buddy that heard something or whatever. It's so shitty though. And yeah, it's, that's, that's so true. That's how it works. Yeah. So. Because, you know, and we, we look out for each other and like, hey, I heard somebody saying this, so, you know, keep an eye on that or whatever. Yeah. And then you're just, um, and then that's when you start to get in your head and you're just like, okay, okay. So, uh, so here's, here's like a thing. Um, when Bill first started, um, I had, I had good rapport with Bill. He was at our tryout. Uh, he was like, yeah, I want you and Claudia to get signed, yeah, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Then, um, you know, I kept I kept in contact with him when I was town in Tampa, but I hadn't signed yet. So then finally when I when I started, he was he was happy for me. And he came in, and rather than be doom and gloom about Dr. Tom going, accept it for what it is, and, you know, I have somewhat of a rapport with this guy, I'm going to go with it or whatever. Yeah. So I sat with Bill, and I was like, hey, man, I just... I, I want I want to be I want to be the guy I want to you know we got some guys that are going to move on I want to I want to lead by example I'll do what you need me to do I want to help I'll help me I'll help you know whatever you need me to do I I I want to do it you know so he had me it was like a busy day and he had me like run hey yeah get him get him in there do some stuff or whatever so he had me run a class and I'm like uh, I don't know what to do, you know, whatever. Yeah. So I was just basically doing stuff. That we, so that was one thing. And then a knock on me later is, man, a lot of the guys would gravitate me, gravitate toward me for like, hey, man, you know a lot of counters. You know a lot of this or whatever. You, you got anything for me? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, okay, shit, let's sit and talk this and this and this and whatever. And um, So I'm, I'm always down to do that. But then it's like, he hey, thinks he's the coach. Yeah, absolutely. This guy thinks he's the coach. Either absolutely. Either you told me that or the yeah. guys told me that when I went yeah. to the performance yeah. center. And they were kind of like pretty quiet in our classes and stuff. <laughs> I just... And the thing is, I would go in and out of learning to shut up and whatnot. Because here's the thing. You're, you're having practice... And like you, there's a rapport going on, and we're all talk, we're all talking back and forth and whatever. Mm -hmm. So you get comfortable, and then you're like, you see a guy make, uh, you know, they keep correcting him on the same mistake or whatever, and you're like, all right, keep your head up. Though. And it, it's it, you're you're thinking of it as kind of a group thing, but then it's coming across as telling someone what to do, even if they want it. It's just like, oh no, you're you're not here to coach. You're here to do your thing. Um, you 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 know, you're here to do you. You're not here to, to do any of that. So I had I had such a, a bad reputation for that for helping people when I I shouldn't have or regardless of whether it was helping or suggesting or whatever. Like I don't know. I don't know. Because it's like they think they think I need to be retrained in certain areas, which, you know, I do need to figure out certain things, but they don't want me passing on my bad habits to others. <laughs> and it's just like, oh no, I'm just showing them a cool way to get into a fireman's carry. 
you know, or I'm all that he does the same counter for the finish every time. I'm just giving him another idea that he may not use, but it may have him come up with another idea. Sure. And I, I have trained wrestlers over the years, so it's inside me. It's not something I'm, I'm try. Hey, man, I know how to do this, so I'm going to tell you. It's just a, a natural thing that kind of comes out. So I, I had trouble with that. Who, who's somebody that you guys saw in developmental that you could not believe like it never worked out? Like my number one would be like Mike Cruel because like when we were there, the show was like written for him. Yeah, I also know love Mike Cruel. But, do you remember? Do you remember John John Laurinaitis came down and so they're like a Q and A and they're like, who do you think's ready to be on TV? And he goes, Mike Cruel. Mike Cruel's ready to be on TV. Well, he's gonna be on TV. You don't remember that? No. You don't remember that? He's there. Someone was asked, like, who's ready? He goes, Mike Kroll. Johnny Ace said. Johnny Ace said, I'd put him on TV right now. And then he just wasn't. And then, just, and then he was in, he was in FCW, he was buried yeah, to the lower, and then he was just fired. Him and Spears were my two guys. Yeah. Uh, I, J- uh, Jacob Duncan. Oh, yeah. I don't yeah, know if that's weird for you. That, I mean, I, look. Yeah, what a I what a, and, and I don't care about the look, man. He was It was tight, Tyrus or something in TNA or whatever. Titan, or Titan, 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 Titan. Oh, Titan. right, yeah, Ryan, Ryan Wilson. I mean, yeah. he did TNA. <laughs> this guy yeah. was six. he was red shirt security yeah. for yeah. TNA yes, yes, with yes, Joe yes. Legend, yeah. who I wrestled and TNA yeah. when he was yeah. red shirt security. This guy, the the six guy. foot yeah. nine, six yeah. foot ten, Jack. just fucking jacked. Not an idiot, like yeah. not like. And, and this is no knock on Eli Cottonwood or whatever, but like. He was just a best. He never watched wrestling. In right. Life. So like, this guy yeah. loved wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. And like whether you're like, oh, he sucked at TNA. It was like he could easily be molded. Loved wrestling. Was a very smart guy. Yeah. Could easily be thrown into. Like if you're going to put some schmuck on. Like yeah. if this is what you want, then six foot ten, jacked to the fucking gills. I couldn't believe. <laughs> if he's not going on TV. Right. I. That's what I thought. I go, if this guy ain't going on TV. There's no way I'm getting on TV. Okay, this is a, a different, uh, this is a twist on it. I was really surprised when Bradley Pierce got let go because he had progressed in the ring, I thought. I mm-hmm. thought he, he could do some good amateur style stuff in the ring. You know, he's limited, but he was working to get better at that. Mm-hmm. This isn't about that. This is about how useful he is for yeah. he could, He's, you know, he's got this. Kid inter- wrote a book. Yeah, this interesting <laughs> wit about him. Yeah. He has ideas. He's a crazy writer. Yeah. Um, he could do backstage stuff. I thought there were just so many different things. How do you not find a he spot? He pitched for that so guy. many different things. I, like I feel not to like put this on. Like I feel I was kind of when I got fired. I was uh-huh. the wrestling. I was doing. Co- I was yeah. doing commentary. Which who was your buddy? The producer guy that was like the man who made the Stone Cold vignettes. Dave something. Chambers. Like, yes, Chambers. Chambers, yeah. Chambers, Chambers was, was awesome. like this guy's amazing to me. Yeah. I, so wrestling commentary. I had a dot com show. Like, it was like, I had, like, all these things, and also I had all these pitches, and, like, obviously it just came from the top, like, Kevin Dunn was yeah. like, ah, that guy's chubby, I don't like him, you know, but, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. it, just having irons in the fire. And, man, the thing is, I, we do all these shows, and then, I don't know how much you guys still get it, but I get it every time I'm at a signing or whatever, somebody's like, hey, man, you know, I'm, I'm sorry you got let go, but, you know, they're hey, like, it's my what, most hated. hey, what happened? Right, <laughs> but so most hated. basically, the easiest way to answer that is is, you know, re- uh, wrestling is art, right? And art is subjective. You know, ten people can look at a painting and think ten different things. So, who, who's? I mean, the people say it's good, mm-hmm. but there's still people that don't think it's good. Yeah. So it just you just have to have more people that like it that don't like it. In so the right position. When it, yeah, when it comes to maybe. A half a dozen people in various positions, right? It depends on their power. You know, you give them a power rating for each, right? And then <laughs> if you don't, great. if you don't have as many points, it doesn't matter because mm-hmm. you can do anything. You have somehow you have to get fucking more points. You know, you, yeah. somebody has to look at you one day and go, "Oh shit, he looks." You know, it's, he's got a new coat, coat of paint on. You know, look at that singlet. You know, okay. And then mm-hmm. they're looking at you different. Yeah. Because once people have made up their mind to you, there it, it's really hard it's to get them to change. And it has happened for some people over the years, but some of the people just there's there's so much, there's so many guys that it's like. Okay, I put this person in this category in my brain. He's there. This, this, these guys are here. These guys are here, and there's so many, so many to deal with that it's hard to jump from one to the other. Bill would make us do a lot of dumb shit, and he would, you know, say dumb shit. But he would always would say like, wrestling is flavors of ice cream. You know, it's just people like different shit. Yeah, you know? yeah. 
but when you're trying to please everybody, it's, yeah. it's real tough. <laughs> but the analogy sucks when it's like, you know, you, you know, you like vanilla, but give me chocolate, right? And then yeah. that's the critique. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so wait, hold on. That'll be better. Is it chocolate like? Also, chocolate's the only answer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh man. Uh, uh, and real quick, got to our guest trainers. One of my favorite things was all the different people we had. Yeah. We had some random ones. We had Perry Saturn a lot. He came in a lot. What was that like? He was really cool, man. He was because he came through crazy ECW and WCW, so he had cool, you know, cool, fun stories. The non PC stories, he'd be like, oh, "This happened, whatever." Just mm -hmm. you know, and it makes it gets a little camaraderie. But he was so good technically. Um, all those years he spent with Malenko and Guerrero and Benoit yeah. and, and, and he's all the original color guy too. Yeah, yeah, that's, absolutely. That's how he, I yeah. remember he came to TV and he pulled Hunter aside and I was like, oh, that Kowalski guy's yeah. the best. He yeah. asked for that gift. And um, when Hunter broke in, I'm sure Saturn was you know like in a for a while guy, yeah. and you know maybe looked after him. Mm -hmm. Same with Terry Taylor. Yeah, for sure. You know, um, and another thing with Terry Taylor that people don't realize. Like, he really helped Big Show a lot at the power plant. So, not only is, is Hunter a big advocate of Terry Taylor, like, Big Show is, too. Yeah. You know, so, there's just... I, I, I have a, Pat Patterson was my favorite when he oh came in. Oh, man, he, he was cool. Like, because there was guys, and, you know, there was so many guys who were like, you suck, this is how it's done, it's just how... Pat Patterson, like, Jim, Atlas, Jim, Jim yeah, Ross. Yeah, yeah, Jim Ross is just He's like, like Ross. Oh, it's a real downers. Yeah. yeah Patterson's yeah. like, ah, I just have fun. They leave you feeling like yeah. shit. Yeah, it just sucks because we're all doing something you love and then you just go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that's something that I found interesting, too, with the developmental, like, how easy it is to to fall in that hole where, like, you kind of have to take moments to, to remind yourself, mm -hmm. like, no, I love wrestling. Uh, or like like you were just saying what steamboat like you're like oh my god please stop talking yeah. <laughs> yeah. never just, did you ever think I would like to say that ever, yeah, right, yeah. Yeah. and it's like I, I don't know how you think steamboat's like, critiquing me and I just want to yeah. leave yeah. <laughs> uh, the thing the thing with steamboat yeah. is he's immaculate in the ring but he can't you can't they have, you have to figure it out on your own. Yeah. I can point you in this direction and say maybe this and say maybe this, but when you're in there, you have to make your own choices yeah. and then do it and then you have to feel it. You can't yeah. do it because you're told to do it. That's another problem with developmental. <laughs> A lot of these guys are like, okay, coach you know, coach told me this, coach told me this, coach told me this, let's do it. Yeah. You No, you yeah, have to like, way. coach told me to do this in case of this. So... When I did this in this town, but you you have to make these choices, and then it, it's it's live. It's, it's live. You got a different crowd. You got these people. Yeah. Like, how are you gonna do? Like, are you gonna stick to the way you called it in the back? Or are you yeah. gonna be able to play around with it? You know, it, yeah. Anyway, you can't. Steamo can't say, "Hey, you want to be good? Just be Ricky Steamboat." You know, yeah. but he that can. That was kind of how he was, though. Yeah. He can try to, you know, he can try to tell you, but what worked for him isn't necessarily going to work for, sure. for someone else. Went, like for me, when yeah. I was Brian Majors, white knee babyface throwing arm drags, whoo, he loved us. Yeah. And then when I became a heel, he had nothing to really say. To you're not that good. Yeah, like yeah, you're not that good. Yeah, he just doesn't. Yeah. Doesn't get his mojo going. He doesn't give a fuck. You know. Sure. Um, uh, we had Vader. Um, what? Vader came in. And That's an interesting Yeah, but his his son was in <laughs> developmental at the time, so that uh, may have had a little something to do with it. But I remember just his son from Boy Beans World, you think, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the bully. Nice. bully. Yeah. Two two Vader stories. Um oh, he's coming, one he's coming to get you. Oh, it's time. My ride is getting close. Um one is you could, I, he rolled in one of the rings, you could kind of hear him stretching and like, uh, uh, whatever. And you look back, and he's in a full split. Yeah, he he's so that. flexible, wow. he's a crazy full split, right? Uh, second Vader story is in developmental, we had uh, Layaki, aka Roman Reigns, yep. and then we had Leo Kruger, right? Who AKA had similar. Adam Rose. Adam Rose, yes, yeah. Oh, yeah? Uh, I didn't know that was Leo Kruger. What? Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. I, I never met Leo Kruger. Oh, I just man. remember seeing. Uh, Have you met Adam Rose? Photo. No. Oh, then you've not. Met then you've met <laughs> the same guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. they had similar black hair, little ponytail, goatee, yeah, right? Yeah. And I'm in the bathroom, and I forget who he's talking to. He can't be talking to mm -hmm. one of us. He's talking to maybe one of the other coaches. He's like, 
I don't know why they got the why they got Sika's fucking kid doing an African hunter gimmick. Because <laughs> he just, I mean, you know, he was watching on a monitor and yeah. he thought he thought that Leo Kruger was Roman Reigns. So I, th- I thought that was kind of a funny funny little bit. Wasn't Leo uh, Kruger there for years before? He was. Wow. So I just was. thought he got really. He had good. different names too. He yeah, had, yeah. Do you remember? Do you remember his other FCW well, his name? It was Ray Lapon, right? The first yeah. time it was just Ray Lapon. Yeah. Interesting. I don't, yeah, he. I don't know. You'd go to Alfred's. You see all the posters, and he'd have he had a couple different. He's names. somebody I wanted to bring up. Not him per se, but he's in this category of guys who were there for so the long. Aaron Stevens. Oh thing. man, the Aaron Stevens, the Byron Saxons, like yeah. those Connor guys. Like, kind of like I don't know how like we're we're, we're talking cruel, about like a brief cruel, time yeah. and how like really it was a ground yeah. like for years to be doing that. Yeah. I, I could only, I can't imagine you know. I mean, when I got there, Aaron Stevens had lost his mind. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's it was yeah. Steve Bradley. Though. Steve Bradley was a guy who was in developmental forever, right? Well, forgotten about. I mean, literally sent to Puerto Rico and forgotten about. Yeah, and he, he was in Memphis. And then forever fired, and, and then just... called, what, two weeks later, and they were like, oh, we're bringing you up to TV. He was like, you fucking fired me up. <laughs> <Wow. laughs> I mean, that was obviously. Like, that, but late, that's late far 90s, before but, us, yeah. yeah. Um, Scotty Too Hotty came in. Uh, and then we'd have people coming into rehab, too. That was another good thing. We'd have, like, Kofi or okay. Christian or whatever. Mm-hmm. Or, or Ray would be in. Punk came down. So we had, like, a good access to a lot of people that would, would like to sit and talk with us. So, so I mean, that was a, an awesome resource to be able to talk with these dudes. Hey, the idea of sitting in developmental for a long time is... Uh, I don't know. It's interesting because it's, like... They're obviously good enough, you know, like, uh, maybe Rick Victor is a good example. John, Johnny Curtis. Johnny, but it's like, they're good enough, they know the job, put them up, but then it's also like, well, four years, you're not going to give them a job, you're not going to put them on TV, like, mm-hmm. you know, like, what do you do with these you don't guys? just give them a shot. Yeah. <laughs> like, Spears is the one that, that always got me, because it's like, wow. okay, we're going to... We're gonna give you Cody Rhodes as a tag partner to help groom him because we know you're that you're you're good enough to do that. We're gonna split you guys up to feud with Cody to again help groom him. And then we're gonna give you this little short ECW run. We're gonna fire you. Now we're gonna rehire you. Yeah. And then you're gonna sit there again. And now you're gonna yeah. start doing jobs on NXT, which is like, I don't know. There's gotta be a point where it's like on, on yeah. their behalf, what like just invest the money. Say here, here's vignettes. Here's your your mm-hmm. debut and. Sink or swim. Maybe you know? that that he's his job is to help those guys, yeah. and, and but, he should but, be looking at like, hey, he's but, got a but job. But dangling the carrot, and he doesn't know. Yeah, that. yeah. 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 That's, why not just be straight with that? Yeah, for sure. You know, they, I mean, I I believe in having, uh, you know, the carpenters. Re- Gerald, Re- Gerald was yeah. in the carpenters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. wrestler They're coaches. Missing. You know what I mean? Like I do. It's like when Goldust came back, that was kind of his thing, and then he all of a sudden yeah, got super yeah. over, and it was like, oh shoot. And it's you know a guy you know. A, like like a, a Lance would be a good guy to, to come in and have matches with it, people. It was that, my good for a while, like on the road. Like I wrestled Leaki like for a whole loop. I wrestled for Xavier Wood for a whole loop. Like the first time yeah. these guys ever do live events, I did tons of that. And that was also a developmental argument that I had, at least when my time was. Um, you can't get wrestle. You can't get better. Two green dudes wrestling right. each other. You oh, yeah. need to wrestle, and that's what I was that's like. Yeah. And I think I told Joey it's, Mercury once. Was, at the, it's fun at the monitor. Though. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah. But it's just like you need these guys, you know, like a Lucky Cannon, like his not, you know, how many times I saw Lucky Cannon, uh, you know, wrestle uh, Alex Riley when we they were both shit, just, yeah. yeah. And it's like, there's no way. And I remember like being like, we need a Chad Collier here. You need these guys. Yeah. They, they, they're, they're about to quit wrestling because they can't make any money and they're in their 30s. You give them a job knowing that this is going to be their job. And so what happened was yeah. these guys weren't allowed to get in the ring. Like that's the rule. You're not allowed, to, right? You're not allowed to get in the ring. The the coaches. Yeah, oh, you can get in the ring. Yeah, that physicality like, is not allowed to touch. Man, okay, so a lot of weird stuff happened when I was in developmental. Where, <laughs> where like when I first got there, it was like ring time. You know, get in the ring, do some stuff. It was encouraged, you know, and it was kind of like a good sign if you stayed after to get in the ring to do stuff Bill, or whatever. It's a big Bill thing. Yeah. But then it turned into uh, I think I think uh, some of it was kind of Steamboat and some because of Terry Taylor because they had back surgeries and stuff and it's like coach you have to coach from outside the ring and then they're just Ooh. like no oh, I gotta get in there and whatever and then like you know somebody would come out and kind of give them the eye they'd get back out of the ring so it was just, that was kind of a weird thing. Yeah. But uh, they need to 
They yeah. need to guide them in a in a match in those house shows. Sure, you know, that's what it is. It's the live. Yeah. The, yeah. Then uh, there was a girl we had, and she was doing these stretches in the corner where it's like you you do like a half flare in the corner okay. with your hands on the ropes mm. and you kick your legs to the pole and it's just kind of like a lower back stretch and it's just you take a step up into it and bridge over and come back. That's Shawn Michaels, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Michaels, yeah. I mean, you don't sit all the way up. Right. You just, you know, just kick your legs over and back, whatever. It's just as a stretch. It's actually, I picked it up from Skyda years ago so I assumed Sarah maybe got it from Claudio and was showing him right. Well, the girls got in the ring one day before whatever and there was no coach around. There was a monitor Mm -hmm. I mean, this this one ring had a camera on it 24-7. So she just, oh, I'm going to go in the corner. And she went in and slid down and destroyed her arm, right? And there was no coach around, so they were worried and, you know, whatever. And she's another one that she actually got her surgery and then got got fired. Like, like not, she didn't even fully heal. Um, So I I don't know that situation. But once that happened... We were not allowed in the ring if there was not a coach a watching us, well, which is so man. Life it's not conducive to like being creative because you're like, um, unless it's like Norman or somebody, yeah. you know. You're just like, hey, can we? No, you know, with the coaches have a meeting. Yeah, or whatever. but your relationship with Norman is different. Like you know, he's cool. Yeah. So those newer guys I might think of these, you know, as Norman is like, ooh, he's the boss. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I mean? yeah. Yeah. So it's even more strict. I yeah, think, yeah. So, and so it's just like. All this extra time, because I okay, I remember a very specific time when uh, uh, we used to have practice matches with the girls. Yeah, you know, we would do sure. like I remember wrestling we, like Maxine. We shit, would do we would like do like these shit. gauntlet matches where it's like you'd go in, you'd pin some person, and someone come in with you, and they'd mm-hmm. pin you, and then someone go in, and then just back and forth. And I'm wrestling like uh, like Foxy's little sister. I'm wrestling uh, Paige or or whoever, uh, and then. Or you'd, you'd see, like, before at FCW taping, you'd see uh, Bray in the ring with Summer Rae, and then she's just trying to chain Russell and roll around, or and he's just trying to, you know, get his wind up a little bit and trying yeah. to do some stuff. And it's just, that's how you learn, and you, you start to make, you know, yeah, what do I do in this situation? Oh, this feels like this, whatever. It's not, okay, grab the wrist, turn it this way, blah, blah, blah. Right. It's just feeling it and whatever. And so that was pretty much taken away. Mm-hmm. So... It kind of would like whenever, uh, whenever like a Hunico or somebody would come in, they just get in the fucking ring. So they like kind of pull somebody in, and, and it's kind of like, oh god, are we gonna get in trouble or whatever? Mm. So it's just, I mean, obviously they're covering their ass because it's a legal thing, yeah. but it's it's impeding some people's progress, mm. and it's frustrating when you wanna, come, you know, work on something for yeah. an idea or a, a move or, or a match or something, and then you're just like, if I do. I'm gonna get uh, you know a shitty report because he does listen to us. Wait, so you're saying if you were like calling a match with a guy and you're like, oh, this thing, and if I said, oh, I don't really quite get it, can you show me? You weren't allowed to like. Get no, it? not at all. Hey, I mean, you could say, hey, Billy, hey, Billy, uh, we're gonna to go in the a, ring. A and, you have to give a warning. And yeah, then, and, and he's yes. got it, and then he's got to wow. kind of ha- half-ass watch you wow. for you know for liability wow. standards or so- wow. something like that. I mean, we were never told the specific reason why, but. It's something along those lines. So it's just, I knew there were a lot of people that could be progressing a lot more quickly if they had that opportunity. Sure. Mm-hmm. You know, And I think it's, you know what, I think it's the same way in the Performance Center. I don't think you, unless changed. you're a road talent coming down, like unless you're a Tyson kid coming in the ring to, or like uh, Bourne came down and a couple times. All the rules times. applied to me. Remember the first day yeah. that you yeah. have to have sleeves at the Performance Center? Uh-huh. And I, we, we were work, lifting weights working out. We weren't even in the ring training. Yeah. And like, Billy came in. It was so fucking weird. Also, like, got like right up in the air. He's like, "You got another one of these?" <laughs> like, what's going on here? And I was playing dumb because you had kind of smart me up there. I'm like, "Yeah, what the fuck rule is that?" I'm like, "I don't care." Like, cut the sleeves off my shirt. He's like, "You better get another one like now." And I had to go wear like the nice shirt I wore to change it. You know, wow. like, this is fucking weird. Yeah. No, but then it's. Everybody wears the same shirt. Everybody wears pretty much the same kind of shorts or black shorts. Yeah, or someone else had that uh, rule in the 40s in a different country. Oh, jeez. <laughs> well, anyway. Uh, 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 is that bad? There was a... This is a Billism where he would he would try to be encouraging and like, all right, guys, everybody's on the right check, you know, right? Things are going this way. 
There you go. And we would all just be like, I don't think he realizes that. <laughs> so like, I yeah, I don't know if it was like the, a tongue in cheek thing, but like, all right, guys, things are going this way. Jesus. So, <laughs> so it's funny. He said the the speech, yeah, the post. Whatever speech is such a staple of developmental, like it, it happened in Deep South, it happened in OVW, I know it, I've seen it in FCW, and you know, yeah. I always get a kick out of that. It's like it's trying to be positive, but like kind of the rally of the troops kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I, I guess in closing, well, one, after all these conversations, I realized that like it's kind of cool that we all were a part of something because it's never going to be like that again, you know, with the Performance Center. And it's kind of, yeah, yeah. kind of interesting. And I just wanted, what do you think? You think it's for the better? Do you think this is. Um, a positive change that's going on with developmental and I, I think it's mostly positive me too uh, they just have there's so many resources you know there's, you can you can cut your promos you can go watch them on the screen uh, you can watch all your matches now the way the way they have the little system set up all you have to do is type in your name and your name is tagged in everything that they record of you and upload so you just sit I think there's only th there were only three kiosks when I was there so that's yeah. kind of the thing um there's the the room that you can cut promos in, so just the fact that Hunter's room. involved and knows who people are, like right. whereas we were oh, no, we were in no man's land, you know? no the, one even knew. The, and it, the fact that he can come down and work one on one with these guys yeah. and then build a relationship with them, it's awesome. Then he knows not only can he say, "Hey Vince, this guy's ready." Like, oh no, I've worked with this guy consistently for the last six months. Right. So yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, they've taken huge steps in the right direction. Huge. Uh, I, I think it's, you know, so my time... Yeah, you've been at the Performance Center to, to uh, do something. Yeah, so yeah, I was explored. there. Yeah, but in 07, 09, it's just like... Uh, I always think about it. I was like, when you think about the Memphis development and the territory, and if you <laughs> think about those guys, and the Street Bradley, although he's no longer with us, he'd be like... In my era, he'd be like, I can't believe how good they have it in OVW. And I think now I say, like, I can't believe how good they have it. In, in, and I'm, and it's in, in five years... Those guys are gonna be like. There's gonna be a DVD like this. They're gonna be like about performance center the early <laughs> years. Be like, hey, crazy the, how the, different the it is. The cameras, right? Yeah. There's two cameras at the performance center, right? Uh, one is goes to the main office, and one goes to Connecticut, right? So you're, I mean, at any I, point, somebody in Connecticut can go boom, right? I was fucking <laughs> speechless. I don't know if you guys saw. There's the Warrior Doc on the network mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, it just followed him like on his comeback and all that stuff yeah. and there's one point where he goes into Hunter's office and it was playing like mm -hmm. Hunter was serious it was playing well, the practice you could see what was going on I was like yeah. holy shit that's real so like, it's always it's gonna like get bed, better you know? yeah. Yeah. It's always, I mean it's always gonna get better it's always and like in 10 years it's gonna be crazy how unbelievable yeah. it is yeah. and it, it's always gonna be better but there's always gonna be faults it's never gonna be perfect that's true. I, yeah. I think I think if anything, I obviously I've been gone for a year and a half, so I don't really know exactly. I'm not up to date, mm -hmm. but I think the one thing that I think is missing the most is oh, having matches and learning in matches, and not like the producer told me to do the match this way, so we're gonna do it this way, and then not learning how to feel it. You know, it's you gotta go out. You gotta have different kinds of matches. You know, you gotta have matches with a lot of stuff. Yeah. Then you gotta have matches with no stuff. Then you gotta, gotta, and then it's you have to to be a star. You have, I think, you have to have this. Um, you know, you have you, you have to be able to make the right decisions, and you have to have the confidence to make these decisions on the spot, and that's a muscle that does not get exercised when you're only doing what you know what you're told mm -hmm. and not necessarily understanding why you're doing it so it's not your choice you're doing it I, I don't see that changing though because <laughs> <laughs> even the the main roster is so overly produced. well but however yeah. nxt though has a shitload of guys that have that skill from traveling internationally mm -hmm. whatever so you it, it there's going to be an evolution of that right. so I mean, it's gonna rub off on some people, and then you know, some people it won't. So, what do you, what do you think, Cabana? Anything different to add? Thanks for joining me. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was cool. Like, I just that's cool. We are part of like kind of like a weird niche of wrestling history that won't be repeated. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, man. Street team. Speaking. No, street team. Did you have to do street team? 
Uh, I had that Kurt Hawkins cred like from the road to the oh, never Oh, that Kurt Hawkins they never, cred. They never really made oh, me do it when I was in FCW. Did, yeah. Were you you did street teams? I did OVW street team where I had to drive an hour and a half to Cincinnati. <laughs> The flyer for some uh, fucking show that nobody would show up to, and I'm not making any more money whether more people come or not, yeah. so I can really give a fuck. <laughs> and I once did it, and then the next time they asked me to do it, I said I'd do it, and I threw all the fucking flyers in the garbage, and I took the day off of practice. It was great. How many people showed up to that show? <laughs> same, 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 same. same. That, that was, just real quick on the street team, that was a mm. fun... Fun way to have camaraderie because you all yeah. have to do this shitty thing. <laughs> but so it's like, oh, we gotta, you know, I had some legendary street teams with, with different people. Just fucking hang out but, with but, really but yeah, really that, was a, that was a Canyon thing. Canyon came in and he was just like, if these guys are gonna be millionaire superstars, like, why do we have them putting up posters? <laughs> He's like, let's get. Let's get a social media mm -hmm. team. Let's get this, you know. So yeah. people that know how to do this, let, make it their job to mm -hmm. do it. Not these guys that are like, oh, dun, 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 you know. <laughs> I go to Alfred's, pick up 5,000 posters. Uh, uh, he gives you a map. Fuck. Last thing, I got to kick out a Canyon Seaman. There are like all these, since Bill's been like, oh, all these like, you know, I'm listening to all these podcasts and interviews of people and everyone, like outside people, and mm -hmm. they're like, yes, there really is a guy in charge and his name is Canyon <laughs> Semen. Like, like, yeah. That always has to be addressed. I think that's funny. But. You get a, it's like boy named Sue, right? Like he must have grown up. Like, it's been rough. Man. Yeah, I, 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 he was an Olympic volleyballer. Is that that's right? That he was in the Olympics. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's fucking Canyon Seaman. He could have. <laughs> he has a middle name. I don't know what it is, but he could have. He could have. Uh, it bit, might yeah. even be worse. <laughs> I don't know. All right, guys. Thank yeah. you. Thank you.